It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie joins Andy Anaka. We'll talk about the screw job that is one Swedish blog gave to all the Mac rumor blogs. We will round up the latest iPhone rumors. And we'll talk about Apple versus Samsung. The, the defense rests. And now it's time for Samsung to talk. Or is that the plaintiff? I can't remember. We'll talk about it next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 312, recorded August 14th, 2012. The Taming of the Screw. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD faces from Citrix. All you need is a webcam and a click to turn your online meeting into a high-definition video conference. Meet with colleagues anywhere in the world, even from an iPad. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code MACBREAK. And by FreshBooks, the easy online invoicing app for small businesses that saves time and gets you paid faster. Join over 3.5 million FreshBooks users and try the service free for 30 days of unlimited use at FreshBooks.com. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on MacBreak. And by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs with automatic device scaling. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code MACBREAK8. And buy audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MACBREAK. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that uh, tells you everything that's going on in the world of Cupertino, California, home to that little tiny company known as Apple Computer. Joining us, as always, Mr. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. You're going to have to take some time off, Andy. Because I really, I really should. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of great staff there at the Sun Times. They've got all bases covered. I, you know, I could lay down my sword and shield for just three days to maybe get some fried clams, take a dip in the ocean. But I just feel too great a responsibility, Leo, and to you, the listeners, and to my readers, to provide them with the. Well, no, not really, but. <laughs> They don't, they don't pay, they don't, I'm a freelancer. They don't pay me unless I actually ah, show up work. Freelancers don't get a vacation. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. It's, if you, it's, it's that's, you, you get paid when you work, period. Yes. But I see that, 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 that it also allows us to like create these wrong, wrong, wrong impressions with our friends and family that he is so devoted to his craft. He was working on Christmas. He was working on Thanksgiving. Whereas it's like, I'm bored. It's four, it's four hours till Thanksgiving. I bet I can get some work done. <laughs> that way that way, I can take Saturday off and go get ice cream for oh, six hours. Oh, isn't that cute? And you've got a little bunny with you today. <laughs> also joining us, I'm very happy to have uh, Renee Ritchie here from iMore.com, which I have, I've only recently learned used to be iVisor.com. And then I... Visor Central. <laughs> and then I... I guess there's no I yet at the time. And then... No, Apple uh, had not invented it. And then after Visor, was it Handspring? Doc, uh, Central Visor Central, Trio Central, Trio, yeah, <laughs> Central. And then Crackberry, yeah. Now Android Central, Android Central, and I More, yes. All iPhone all the time. iPhone, iPad, anything Apple makes with an I in front. Oh, of it. okay, good. I and More, I get it. Yes. Well, that's good. That gives you plenty. That's more than enough, so to speak. They also yeah, they're a busy company. Yeah, these Apple guys. <laughs> Get busy. They also do, a, like, you guys do a hundred podcasts. You got the Palmcast, the Crackberry Cast, the iMore Show, the Zen and Tech Show, <laughs> Super Functional, Iterate, and even yeah. Windows Phone Central. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's a little Stop slower over busy. there. That's like a couple of guys... <laughs> no, they're they're actually killing it lately. I mean, they got the the SDK leak and a oh, bunch right. of other that was stuff. You guys yep. are really good at getting the rumors. In fact, that's why you're on because you didn't get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the screwing. This is a very good story, and I and I'm actually kind of a little teensy weensy bit relieved that the hoax was revealed before this show. You probably saw f uh, headlines everywhere. 
Apple creates new screw to protect the, the keep you from getting into the iPhone. What was what happened, Renee? Um, uh, in hindsight, or or as it <laughs> well as, tell, it, as it broke, and tell us how you avoided being fooled. The story came out that Apple was making a strange, lopsided, asymmetrical screw head. I mean, Apple did transition from a regular screw to a pentalobe screw right. uh, to stop people from opening up iPhones and iPads. And they've had and a long Apple history gear. of this. They 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 used uh, Torx screws for a while, even though they're com yep. not uncommon, but still a little difficult. Uh, yeah, and this was an asymmetrical screw, so of course no one would have one. And I'm guessing iFixit would have to forge some in the fires of Mordor so that <laughs> the rest of us could... Could so you might see, you might have seen these stories like here on the Cult of Mac. Not to name names, a lot of blogs got bit. And as I said, I might have been bit. Apple may be working on top secret asymmetric screw to lock you out of your devices forever. Well, it's a cliche, right? Any company sufficiently large is indistinguishable from evil. <laughs> we we so just figured that out to get us. The source, and, and uh, to their credit, Cult of Mac uh, points to the source, which is a picture on Reddit, unsourced, anonymous, a friend took a photo a while ago at that fruit company. They are obviously even creating their own screws. And this was it. This was the this was the tip, the lead, the leak. This was all it took. Uh, I assumed it was BlackBerry. <laughs> <laughs> fruit company. Yeah, BlackBerry's a fruit. Yeah, absolutely. So no. why did you not get bit by this? Everybody else did, didn't they? We're really cautious about posting rumors that we can't source ourselves. Um, there is some value to, to posting things that you know are false or things that you think you can add context or value to. But if it's just a screw and it's unsourced and it doesn't make sense, uh, I don't see a reason why Apple would do this. I understand they want to lock you out, but that's going to an extreme amount of trouble. And it's usually almost like security. Like you're, you're only worth as much money as they will pay to do this to you. And it, it, it just didn't pass the sniff test to me. So we... I happily avoided it. Kyle Weens at iFixit said, if this screw design is legitimate, the ramifications would be severe, but, and to Kyle's credit, he was skeptical as well. Yeah. He said, uh, my gut feel is this isn't from Apple. The threads are unrealistic. He was the first to point out that, in fact, <laughs> physics dictates that this screw is not going to work. I suspect that a head like that is too complex to use as a tool head. Existing tool designs tend to be simple because the head needs to withstand a fair amount of torque. If this is an Apple design, it looks like it would be expensive to manufacture. Uh, and in fact, it was a hoax perpetrated by a Swedish design company. The Swedes, as usual. As usual. I'm kind of a little mad at this company <laughs> because this is, I don't know, this is a little bit day4.se, right? And not only did they get the reporting, then afterwards they said it was a hoax, so everyone went back and gave them more. I don't like rewarding negative attention. I, I think agree. that if people do create things just to get links, the last thing I want to do is give them links because it actually validates that business model. And not only did they get the links for a crazy story, but then everyone went and linked back to them again when they admitted to hoaxing, to, to it being a hoax. It's very close to trolling, isn't it? Yes. And I agree, trolls, the worst thing you do with trolls is give them any attention at all. However, we are giving them attention, so maybe I should just <laughs> shut up now. Yeah. Well, on, on the other side, it, it feeds both sides of the problem uh, in that someone, it, it, a newspaper that thinks it gets a scoop and sells a million papers because it was hoaxed into doing a scoop, they've got no problem with that. All they were caring about right. was selling the million papers. As a matter of fact, they're grateful, they're grateful that, the, uh, that, they, that whoever hoaxed them pulled the mask off the hoax while it was still an active news story because that way they got to sell another 750,000 papers the next day. So it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it points to the difficulty of being in the news business these days because it really is critical to be among the first 20 minutes worth of coverage on a certain story so that you get that, uh, you get that Google ranking so that when people start to hear about this, that you get the link backs, you get the, you get the search hits. It's hard to, it's, I, the, the fact that I've, deliberately chosen to be in a job where it's not so important for me to be the absolute mm. first person to report someone mm -hmm. that, that that means that it would be kind of wrong for me to fault somebody uh for for wanting to be the first in on that action and to their credit most of the stories that were linked to at least were a little bit circumspect and they're at least saying that hey here's a picture of a screw we don't know where it comes from isn't it interesting though uh and then i mean i and i myself when these rumors come up if it's interesting enough to me for me to spend the first sentence saying okay who knows if this is true or not it's probably not but let's let's have a conversation about the topic of having security screws on a modern device is, is there any point to it uh and, and then at least you can have a nice discussion on that basis
Yeah, and I don't. I want to emphasize this. I am not pointing fingers because we could. I could have just as easily been breathlessly bit by this. The only reason we didn't is it happened on a Wednesday. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't know. So, so that, that's exactly how devious they were. They also chose to release information on the same schedule that Apple would as soon as we've done recording this show. But it, what I do, the reason I bring it up, and it's not to give credit to this Swedish design blog either or give them any additional attention, but it's to point out how overheated the rumor mill is, how yeah, difficult yeah. it is to know what's a true rumor or not, and and to remind people that do not believe everything you read. And and do trust people like Andy and Renee who cover this day in, day out, and they have a sniff test. And if you're if the problem is, I think that exactly as you say, Renee, there's such a pre there's such pressure to, and and Andy, there's such pressure to report instantly. There's no disincentive really to get it right. Because uh, you get links either way. It drives traffic either way. It might be a little embarrassing. Um, and, and and there's also, uh, when, you, when you, I have, I've not been to journalism school, but I hang out with a lot of people who did get the, the proper paperwork to do my job. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 a lot, and a lot of what they study there is not just the techniques, but also here's what your responsibility is to readers. Sometimes a piece of news comes in and you don't have time to lock it down as absolutely true or dismiss it as completely false. And you have to make that call. Should you at least put out the information that there are people who are talking about this topic? And sometimes you say, I don't know if this is true or not. We have to make sure we couch it as completely unconfirmed. But people are going to be looking to us for information about this topic. And we have to be the ones to tell them that here's what we know, which is not much. Right. So there's 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 ways to fall on the wrong side of, of, of the line either way. But sometimes you do have to go forward and say, here's, what's, here's something that is getting a lot of discussion right now. And here's what we know about it. As long as you say, you know, this is this, as you said, uh, this is the source. And it may or may not be credible. The I agree with the page view on that. sucker. <laughs> I mean, we we've done that too in the past. When a story is big enough, you you almost are compelled because people are talking about Everybody's it. Everybody's interested, it. right? They want your take on it. They want right. to know. They want your help to determine if it's true or false. And I think there is, like Andy said, a lot of value in the conversation and issues around it, even if that specific instance. In this um, case, a real story. Cult of Mac uh, did the right thing, and others did the right thing by pointing back to the Reddit story and saying this is the source, because that does let readers at least. Uh, decide where I have problems is where uh, and and you do this I more and I understand why you do it because you can't reveal your sources. You'll say things like a source that has previously been accurate. Yeah, and uh, the problem is there's no way for us to judge that. You know, it uh, comes down to our reputation. I mean, it, if we get enough right, then right. people will start to give us credibility, and if we blow a lot of them, then we'll lose that credibility. So we have to make sure that we have a high enough confidence in printing that rumor that we're willing to stake our credibility on it. Mm. It's it's also bears mentioning that. Uh, there, especially where Apple is concerned, you can have the story absolutely locked. I mean, you've got this story cold, but then three weeks before the thing that is inevitably yeah. going to happen, that you have multiple sources, multiple paper documentation. Look, the hall has been booked. This, You're this, holding this, it this, in your hand. Literally, no. Literally, okay, no, I, I, I've got. I, I got into that situation exactly once, where it was I had everything, and that I knew. I also, I also knew that the person who was rumored to be giving this talk, the, the presentation, he actually is unavailable on this day. And also that just point after point after point after point where you could not have more information that this is going to happen. And then it just and then within two weeks of the things inevitably supposed to be happen, it didn't happen. That someone got cold feet or decided this was not a good strategic idea for them and they backed out at the last minute. So even if you felt as though you were completely confident saying, yes, here's exactly what's going to happen. Here's the date it's going to happen and here's exactly what's going to be discussed. You don't know until... You know, as, as, as I say time and time again, I don't believe an Apple rumor until Tim Cook is standing on a stage holding right. it in his hand and being photographed by 500 people. And even at then. That point, <laughs> at that <laughs> point, I will, back, I, again, I, I will, yeah, exactly. I will say, hmm. yes, <laughs> but I thought it's, it's, see, there's, you didn't see the back of it. And you know what? The, 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 the tablet is just thick enough to be a Pez dispenser if it were a Pez dispenser. So I'm not going to completely, I'm 95% sure, but not 100%. When his head turned, the polygons didn't render perfectly. <laughs> Well, and, and it's that's the other side of the coin is you can go too far in being a skeptic. Um, so it's it, so it's good to be conservative. Yeah. Anyway, I say all this as a, as a prologue to the Apple iPhone rumor roundup, which we're about to go into. Sure. So, let, let's let's go on let's go on that. But for, but first, I'll just say in passing that two days ago I realized that there was a hole in my life 
and realize that, wow, it's been almost six weeks until anybody has had any interest in talking about iPad mini or Apple TV rumors. Yeah. It just, <laughs> so this, so this, so this is how these things go. There's like waves of interest. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And it's, sometimes it's iPhone I, five series or new iPhone. Sometimes series, right? I think I conflate interest and the number of stories uh, confirming a rumor as uh, somehow making it more realistic yeah. or more believable. And I don't even know if that's true because this screw is, is, is a good example. I mean, uh, all the big blogs, all the big Apple blogs uh, reported to Andy's it. point previously, I mean, we have, there's that famous story of Steve Jobs not liking the plastic screen on the original iPhone and getting right. it changed in a Changing matter of it. weeks. Yep. They are, I think, one of the fastest manufacturing companies in the world. So exactly what Andy said, until someone on Apple is holding it up on a stage and the press release hits, it's not confirmed. Now, I have to point out that is not going to happen again because uh, that was when the iPhone first came yes. out. Yes. They're, yep. They know now that the the minute they put anything in, uh, you know, in the, in the in the store, they're going to have five million orders in the first hour. So they cannot change things on a dime as they used to. That they've they been manufacturing the, no, the, they can the new iPhone. They decide not to launch on a dime, though. I mean, if it's a new product, exactly. they can decide not to launch on a new later on a new days. product. Sure, but yeah. I think well, but, the new iPhone is written in stone at this point. Yes, in I fact, they're probably so. making it. I, I I think that if, at this point, if the September 12th rumor is true, and it really does have all the hallmarks of an actual leak as opposed to uh, just an unbiased rumor, then, yeah, they, they, they really have to be committed at this point. But I do think that if Apple found a flaw that they felt like they needed to correct or really strongly wanted to oh, correct, yeah. in the in the absence of any actual commitment to ship, they would delay a month in order yeah. to get that done. Show, they call them showstoppers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the advantage to being in September as opposed to October. You know year. what? Somebody in the chat room just said this, and I, I forgot. What ha you know? A remember, Apple put Think Secret out of business. Think Secret was the original <laughs> Apple rumor blog, and uh, put them out of business by suing them. They haven't done that lately. Is that does that did Apple give up, or are these blogs more careful? What is your what is Renee? You'd be a perfect guy to talk about this. Uh, don't you worry that you'll be Think Secreted? You know, it, it's interesting exactly what you said. Originally, Apple would even send cease and desists if companies put up uh, leaked parts or leaked designs. Uh, but I think at a certain point, they realized that that just affirms those leaks. It actually adds maybe a layer of credibility to it. And by staying silent, it becomes much more difficult to sort out the noise from the signal. And uh, this was interesting. On Apple's last conference call, Peter Oppenheimer was talking about the damage to Apple's financials that leaks about future iPhones cause to sales of current iPhones. And Tim Cook, um, I don't know if it was a different point of view, but he said that if people were lusting after or wanting future mm. Apple products, he was okay with that as long as they were wanting future <laughs> Apple products. Mm -hmm. Maybe that maybe a little uh, common sense is leaked yeah. in. <laughs> Think Secret reported the Mac Mini in 2004. It was, in fact, announced at Mac World in 2005. Apple sued over trade secrets and put the site out of business in 2007, five years ago. Um, if you look at us, I mean, we got the September 12th date, um, and originally people weren't certain, but I think within a day and certainly within 24 hours, everybody the Wall Street it. Journal, the New yeah. York Times, uh, Jim Dalrymple at The Loop, The Verge. But uh, how much of that is groupthink? How much of it is saying, well, Renee's pretty good, Imore's pretty good, let's say it's true, and how much of it is their own reporting? I mean, I have to admit, when I hear The Times, The Journal, and, and you guys, I say, well, it's true. But is that wrong? Are you all just is are they all just you know riding on your back? I I I don't think they put their credibility on my back <laughs> just yet. So they have their I mean, own. We've been okay. They yeah, must have their We've been fairly own. accurate, but yeah, yeah, but I don't think that any major newspaper would stake their reputation on any other anyone else's sources at this point. I know because I watched Aaron Sorkin's show, The Newsroom, and it was very clear that if they didn't have two sources, they were not going with. Yes. It. So that must well, be. If it's on TV, Leo, it's true. Exactly. exactly. If, it's, if it's HBO drama. If, if, if it were Lifetime channel, then there'd be some wiggle of room for belief. But it, this, no, is, this, no, is, no, no, this is this isn't it's just HBO. TV. It's HBO. If Aaron Sorkin put pen to paper, you have to believe it. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 seems, it seems as though in the past uh, year and a half, two years, there are sometimes things where, to, you know, like where sometimes you look at a painting that you don't know whether it's, uh, you realize that there's a, there's a forgery somewhere here. One mm -hmm. of these five Degas is a forgery mm -hmm. and you don't know anything about art, but there's something about number three that says, this one has the shape of a forgery. This is not what I expect to see from this artist. In the past year and a half, two years, there have been sometimes when there are rumors that come out, you don't know for sure. You can't pin something down, but it has the shape mm -hmm. of something that 
of information that Apple wanted out there for whatever reason that we can't speculate about. And that's why I tend, that's why I'm booking tickets for September 12th. Oh, you are? Uh, oh, that's the, I'm, that's I'm making, the, that's I'm the, making, that's the test I use. Is Andy flying? <laughs> it's, yeah. And, and, and now, now it comes down to, do I have to pay my own money or I'm going to talk we'll, somebody we'll, that no, I no, work no. for? Into we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll fly out. That's a done deal. In that case, it's a done deal. Okay. <laughs> if you're flying, I'm buying. <laughs> exactly. It worked. <laughs> yeah, not, I'm going to Legoland, everybody. I'm getting vac It's vacation time in September. <laughs> it's the best point time of year one. to come to San Francisco, point, actually. Point number one, talk about how you never take a vacation. <laughs> point number two, talk about oh, 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 oh. Dance, Master Marionette, dance. Massively executed. <laughs> Sorry. He punked sorry, me. Was that out loud? <laughs> I've been punked. <clears throat> Let's take a break. When we come back, <laughs> the punker and the punky and Renee Ritchie from iMore. If you can't We're find anything in coach, give me business <laughs> class, give me first class. It's okay. It's covered. Go ahead. Book it. I'll pay for it. Oh, he's no. not commercial. It's okay. He's not hearing. <laughs> <laughs> we better pay for Andy's ticket. Here's a word <laughs> from Citrix. <laughs> this ad will pay Andy's. You can listen to this ad. <laughs> or you can let Andy stay home. It's up to you. <laughs> this ad brought to you by Citrix, the folks who do all those great products. We talk about them a lot, but the one I want to talk about right now is their online meeting software. You know, I'm kind of excited. We'll find out if this is going to happen, Chad. GoToMeeting is, uh, has been screen sharing. They've been doing that for years, and it's the best. It's easy to set up. It uh, does what's called nat traversal, so you don't have to punch a hole in the firewall. You don't have to get the IT department involved. It's really simple to start a meeting. It's a click of the mouse. The invitations get sent out. People to join your meeting, and this is important, especially if you're doing like a sales presentation or you're, you're pitching somebody. You don't want to make them jump through hoops. So it's very easy for them to join. They just click the link. The software is installed fresh each time, by the way, very quickly in about 30 seconds. And they're there. They're on it. But this is what's really cool. You can now join a meeting. There he is on his iPhone, on your iPad, on your Android tablet. And if you're on the iPad or a desktop, you can send video. And this is the thing I'm excited about. We're talking with their engineers about starting to use their video perhaps for our shows. Because um, I have to tell you, I've used it. It's easily the best video, but much better than that, Skype or anything else. Secure, fast, easy. you got to love this. Go to meeting with the HD Faces video now. On the iPad, you can share your picture from the iPad. I want you to try it free for 30 days. Visit the GoToMeeting website. Click the orange uh, Try It Free button. And uh, then when you do that, you're going to be asked uh, for uh, your first name, last name, email address. And see that link for promo code? Click that because I want you to put in the promo code MACBREAK, M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, so that uh, Andy gets to fly here. That's GoToMeeting.com. Use the promo code MACBREAK break and we thank them for their support for all of the stuff we do on <laughs> twit september 12th what day of the, is that a wednesday that is a wednesday yeah, yeah it means we're gonna have to flip flop uh mac break weekly as usual do you think okay this is interesting do you now remember uh when the i the second iphone i think the iphone what was it the iphone 3 no 2 3g 3g came out was that 2008 it was Yep. Mm -hmm. I did the 24 hours of iPhone from the cottage. You remember that? And I, <laughs> I stayed up all night. Talked to people waiting in line and stuff. And it hasn't been as exciting really since. Do you think this new iPhone will be as exciting as that? I don't think so uh, for a couple of reasons. It's no, it's no long. Remember that there was nothing that existed uh, right. about the iPhone before the iPhone existed. Also, I can't think of any other product, including the iPad, that was as heavily hyped. I mean, I, yeah. I for three months, I had a steady schedule of telling people what it was like to actually hold an iPhone in my right. hand and use it for You'd 38 held one. minutes because, yeah. because, yeah, because I'd had, because I'd had my briefing and I'm talking, I'm talking to like everybody who's like, but what's, what's this going to be? What's that going to be like? And I'm, that's just absolutely unprecedented. And also remember that now it's no longer such an exotic thing. You see them everywhere. And also people can pretty much buy them any day of the week. Um, and, and thirdly, Apple's running out of great things to do. So they could they could come up with a really huge and lovely surprise for everybody. But remember that every subsequent model was, oh, my God, this is the one that actually uses high speed data. Oh, my God, this is the one that has that incredibly great display. Oh, my God, this is the one that has a camera that's as good as any camera that you'll have in your pocket. Now, 
if, okay, based, based on rumors, a lot of it is like internal hardware stuff that has a benefit to the user but doesn't translate immediately to – do you remember, remember the old days when you have a phone that you would, you would drop and it would fall on the ground? This time you it's, – it's, it's the iPhone IF, ISS. You basically let go of it. It just simply hovers. <laughs> Yeah, now if they do that, I'm doing 24 hours. <laughs> hover phone, I, I'm, de I'm I, contractor. No, I'm definitely upgrading for the hover phone. <laughs> the hover phone, if, if it's, especially especially if it's like enough propulsion, you could put like a small mouse or like a, a hamster on it. Because I think that would be pretty awesome having a floating hamster tray. Let's do the uh, rumor rundown. Say, so see what we know, what we don't know. Uh, I think because uh, you, you, I think I'm or Renee was the first to publish the date, September 12th. You're now yes, sir. pretty much confirming that. Uh, Pre-orders, this is the new, the new bit of information, on that day, at least in the U.S., and released nine days later. So, But this is kind of how it's been of late. This isn't too much of a surprise. No, but yeah. it is same-day pre-order. Last year, it was the event on the Wednesday, the pre-orders on the Friday. And before that, it's varied to a greater degree. Right. So if this is accurate, um, Apple is being very aggressive about getting it out there. You're also saying that you've learned the second wave of iPhone launches, international launches, will begin in the first week of October, likely October 5th. That's pretty yeah. quick, too. That's, I believe that's what they did last year. It was about okay. two or three weeks later. Where, uh, But in the last year, the iPad 3 and the iPhone 4S, Apple was much faster and much larger in getting phones into international markets than they ever were before. And you never know because they're going to a new phone. And traditionally, panels have been a constraint for them like the ipad it was hard to get those panels even the iphone 4 was constrained and you, if they have a new screen you always worry are they going to be able to get enough manufactured but if they're being aggressive with it i think that's a good answer that's the gating factor isn't it the manufacturer yep. yeah um what else uh what else are we uh, I'm, I'm just going to do timing first and we'll talk about the actual uh product i think that's all the timing um but we don't know countries specifically, just the first round of international. The U.S., of course, will get it the first U.S. Day. first, then. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something to Well, I mean, about. Canada, I live in Montreal, and Canada did get the 4S the same day, but we did not get the 4. We got the 4 several weeks later right. than the U.S., so you never know until they you announce never know. it. Well, actually, that's how it is kind of with the, the Galaxy phones. They often ship, uh, the Note shipped months before it shipped in the U.S. Uh, well, part of part of that was because they didn't know if they'd actually be able to sell it in the U.S. The Samsung uh, Galaxy 3 was one of the handsets that was being targeted by Apple, for instance. Right. So that's why they got the Gala. That, that, that's that's why a lot of uh, the, the tech blogs basically went internationally to get a copy of it. That's, uh, that's what I did. one was released six, yeah, yeah. exactly, six yeah. to two months earlier, right. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a tough decision for me because... Uh, of course, Samsung is, and we'll get to the trial later, but the battle royale, Samsung has announced that they're going to do the Galaxy Note 2. I was a big Note fan. Uh, August 29th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of weeks ahead of the uh, Apple announcement. And it will be five and a half inches. And, and, and Sam, see, Samsung's not holding back. They said it's going to be five and a half inches and it's going to be an unbreakable screen. <laughs> we'll find a way around that, Leo. <laughs> well, it is, an, it is it's a new technology. And that's actually the one thing that gave me pause. I don't care about the breakable, unbreakable, but it's a, it's a new thin screen, almost a flexi screen technology. And mm -hmm. so that will be interesting. I'll get both, of course. I'll get both. Absolutely. Um, we'll, find, yeah. we'll find out. I, I'm, I'm pleased with how durable it is. I've actually dropped my uh, Galaxy 3 a uh, couple of times and had the, it, it, passed, it passed the incompetence test. So, Well, you know, it was Steve Martin who told me, I asked him how much, how, how do you like the 4S? He said, well, they took a great phone and then they made it out of glass and slippery. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was an interesting choice. Um, but uh, this, okay, so we can start talking physicality. The newest rumor, Unibody, that would be more, certainly more durable, would it not? It would remove the back glass plate from the equation. It would have a metal glass, a metal plate except for the top and the bottom, uh, obviously for the radios. Much but like the would, first iPhone, right? It was metal back with plastic top and bottom. As far as I know, yeah, only Nokia plastic. can make radios go through stainless steel. Everyone else has to yeah. use you know, radio <laughs> transparent materials. Right. Aha. So they will have to have plastic. Well, yeah, because yeah, again, you don't, you, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to. It's, it's not going to be the iPhone Faraday model where it's now clad in <laughs> copper sheeting. <laughs> no, no, never be, never be disturbed by unwanted calls ever again. 
It's an uh, adamantium vibranium mix. That's just perfect for me. Exactly. That's, see, that's what happened. It's not as, uh, I'm sorry, I was about to go into a 10 minute description of what's happening in Wakanda and the Marvel Universe, which nobody would, would have cared about. So, is but, this yeah. a, a credible uh, rumor, this unibody rumor? There's, so I, I think we talked about it last time too. There's, there were three prototypes. One was a 3.5 inch screen, similar to what it is now. One was a four inch screen. I believe there were two with four inch screens and this was one of them. Uh, and you, Apple always does that. They have, I think like the cliche is 10 designs, three prototypes, one release. Mm -hmm. And I believe they had until July to decide. And based on all the parts leaks, it looks like this is the, the casing they went with. A unibody case with a glass top. Yeah. Plastic top and bottom. That would be more durable, certainly. The glass back was... No, a, not no? necessarily. I was, I, 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 this is an area in which I, I recognize how little I know about engineering. I was talking to a couple of engineers about 11 months ago who were telling me that he, 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 he made the argument to me that it's possible that the whole purpose of the glass back with that design was that if you happen to drop it and something was going to break, it, the Apple wanted the $20 sheet of glass at the back to break, the thing that's so easy that can be <laughs> replaced. No, I'm serious. Something that can be replaced in like exactly five minutes by anybody with a screwdriver versus the incredibly expensive uh, multi-layer display component the, at the front. I don't I don't know if that's absolutely true or not, but I was trying to figure out why. It, 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 he, he made a case about, well, here's how, here's what happens when you have something that's, that's in a frame. The, the shock has to go somewhere where, and unless uh. you unless you basically by choosing materials tell the laws of physics please mm -hmm. send all this all the please send all the force into this part instead of this part anything can happen it's the same reason why a car is designed so that it it is designed so that uh, parts of it are going to collapse and parts of it are going to take the damage and leave uh, the right. center compartment pretty much alone that makes sense but it, it's just it's just an idea it's not uh, it's not something that I've, I've i've i don't have an internal apple memo point to that so the, so the fact that they've they, they've cho they if they have chose chosen this new tub like design it's not necessarily to make it stronger Ooh, is it well, then why well the i mean andy's point is exactly correct in, in with the iphone 4 and the iphone 4s you could just unscrew it pull the back plate off put on a new back plate right. the digitizer is much more expensive and difficult uh, to replace, and this might give the actual phone greater structural integrity, but it might be at the expense of uh, more expensive repairs when and if it does break. Because, well, because yeah. if anything breaks, it'll be the glass on front. It'll be the front, yeah, the digitizer, right. which might be a new in-cell digitizer, which would be one component instead of two layers. Do you think that it's liquid metal, or is it just plain old no. aluminum? No. No. We have we we haven't seen any product of that scale that's made out of liquid metal. Uh, that especially when you consider the volume of components that Apple that uh, that that provider would have to manufacture. So I don't think that we'll see anything serious like that in liquid metal in, in the near future, as far as I know. We've barely seen some ejectors out of liquid metal. <laughs> exactly, and, they, and you still don't get them in any in all the phones now. And I yeah. frankly don't know why they're any better than anything else. But okay. Uh, motherboard points to, and this is from 9 to 5 Mac, photos of alleged next generation iPhone motherboard surface point to new antennas and new battery. Well, they need the, they need a new antenna to go LTE. And as far as I know, they are going LTE with this model. We they don't know have what to. countries. They have yeah. to. Yeah. Well, the question is which countries, because you have, I think, 36 to 38 segments of LTE. Even though the bands are similar, the segments are so different that it's very difficult to support. I think you need a nine-band radio to support all the LTE Too segments. Many. So the iPad only does um, North America, U.S. and Canada right. uh, for LTE. They would need three or four different models to, to make a global LTE Hence the radio. successful lawsuit in Australia. Apple, yeah. Apple billing their iPad is 4G when it's not, except in the U.S. and Canada. And, 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 and you're right, Leo. I don't. I don't know how much longer Apple can choose to not do an LTE uh, iPhone, even if it has to be a US only edition. The, at, at, over the next year, one of the biggest problems that Apple has to deal with is they have to make sure the people their next iPhone is still going to be an iPhone because it's not as though it's, it's not as though uh, an iPhone buyer is, is is a sheep and they're, they're never going to consider buying anything else. I'm just saying that it's a very, very powerful thing when you have something that works great for you and you've been very, very happy with. If you if the you know just like your dad like he he bought a, he bought a Ford car because he, his last five cars been Fords they all worked incredibly well and and that's why he's the first dealership he hits is a Ford dealership but the first time he breaks that buying 
pattern. And then it's two years later, he forgot that he used the, the iPhone for the, for, for the first two or three years. And now he's more open to try other right. things. So I think it's if, if LT and I think a lot of people are at this stage are going to say, why am I if I'm going to be spending the exact same amount of money every single month for data? Why am I not getting broadband speed data and i think that apple has to at this point has to get lte on that phone it's by the, hook or by it's the old saying um customer retention is way less expensive than customer acquisition and they're exactly to andy's point they're going to want that and i think that's also why the screen's going to four inches if if tim cook's goal is to sell more phones and donny ive's goal is to make the biggest screen possible they right now sell about half the phones on u.s carriers but some people are going to choose a bigger screen over Apple. Some people will choose Apple. Some will choose a bigger screen. And if they can make a bigger screen, maybe that goes to 55% or 60%. Mm. Um, and that's that's a good jump for Apple on a new generation phone. Is it safe to say that Apple is at an unusual juncture that they are starting, they do need to start looking over their shoulder? They haven't had to in the past. They had such a lead on everybody else. I think so. Uh, it's uh, I, I, every, every time that I, I am the sort of person who I will be looking at every time there's a crowd shot of uh, in the Olympics, both the opening and the closing ceremonies. I've like, here are the people who have spent uh, the, 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 the voice over saying, and here is here is Renee Williams, who has spent 13 years of her 16 years becoming one of the most elite and all the story. And I'm thinking, OK, what brand of phone? Oh, that's not an iPhone. OK, I yeah. think it's an HTC, but I think it's two generations old. And so I'm, I really do look at these things. And you see the, the days when if you saw someone with a smartphone in their hand, it was guaranteed there was going to be an iPhone. That's long in the past. Now, if I'm on a subway, there's a great there's a larger chance it's going to be by any other manufacturer. If I'm at Panera, if if I'm at another public place where people are using their devices, iPhone is just another brand that I'm seeing. So I think that that indicate that's not uh, the definitive market research, but I think that that's a data point that I have to consider pretty carefully. That if there was a specific panache, if there was a specific eliteness or attraction to the iPhone, it's not nearly as great as it was just a year ago. I mean, I've, I've been walking around with the, the Galaxy 3 for the past couple of months alongside my regular phone. And I, it's just like having this, it's almost like the first year of, of walking around with an iPhone. I mean, at, at Chipotle, I was getting a burrito and I was just checking my mail and she, and the, the person assembling my burrito, ooh, is that the Galaxy 3? Like, wow. is it as awesome as everybody says it is? And I said, wow. yeah. Oh my God, that's my dream phone. I'm like, wow, someone has just said an Android phone is their dream phone. The world is not is not 180 degrees out of shift with how I understand it to be, but I have to pay attention to these data points that I'm collecting as I go through life. Well, and to that point, Apple uh, stores have started uh, price matching iPhone discounts from uh, carriers. Yeah. So uh, that's something Apple never had to do uh, before. They're discounting uh, the iPhone 4S and 4 models by $49 and one penny, but you have to ask for it. Uh, to match the other, uh, well, who else is it? Best Buy that's uh, selling it at that price. And this is this is only, not online, but only on the retail stores. This is from MacRumors.com. Um, that may also be because the new iPhone's coming. Yeah, absolutely. Although yeah. Apple doesn't traditionally price match, but they seem to be price matching this time. This is a first for them? I'm not sure if it's a first, but it's definitely not, not their usual modus operandi. Yeah. Retail stores have been giving authorization to match discounted prices from approved major retailers and carriers, but you have to ask for it. So if you're going in to buy an iPhone today, say, hey, I want that uh, Best Buy price or Target price or Sprint price. <laughs> Sprint's, yeah. Sprint's the one that uh, dropped it down to 150 for the iPhone 4S 16 gig. I may have done that before. I mean, the carriers and the retailers have discounted iPhones when the next iPhone was imminent, right. but Apple has not. Carriers can do that because they're going to make the money anyway. 50 bucks yeah. here or there, who cares? We're going to get 2,500 bucks off of you over the next two years. And if we can yeah. get you now, we got you for two years. Right. Let's get you now while we can. And that phone will be 100 bucks in, uh, in about a month, so they're getting an extra 50 bucks. That's right. Day. Yes. <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Here's an interesting article, uh, MIT Technology Review. Somebody's going to have to explain this to me. The iPhone has passed a key security threshold. It's a Steve Gibson topic, Leo. Yeah, you no idea, <laughs> huh? This Simpson Garfinkel, who is really a good security guy. Um, Apple has crossed a significant threshold. Technologies the company has adopted protect Apple's cus content, Apple's customers' content so well that in many situations, it's impossible for law enforcement to to perform forensic examinations of devices seized from criminals. I don't know why I'm laughing at that. It just makes me happy. No, but... Yeah, yeah. No, you're, I don't you're, know you're, why. You're, I shouldn't. They're bad guys. 
But I you're just, absolutely. Yeah, but I don't want him looking at my phone. Yeah, we 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 are living in a given that all the information that's on the phone, and given that how that the these forensic tools are basic consumer products in law enforcement. That's not that's not like you're being suspected of terrorist activity. This phone is being put into a special evidence pouch and sent to a really really super top secret lab in the NSA that only processes eight phones a year. It's like no, this uh, you know this this local police police department spent eighteen eighteen $1,800 for this piece of software. You stupidly, when the officer said, hey, is that a new iPhone? Can I see it for a sec? <laughs> you, don't, you don't know that in the, in the, in the five minutes right. in which he was supposedly checking your license back in the car, he actually did forensics on your phone. Right. And you might not ever know that that actually happened. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that this is happening widespread, but you know that the, these tools are out there that make it very, very easy for an unprotected phone to have all of its data copied and, and examined uh, with very, very little oversight. So if you have, if you have a, 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 a police officer or an investigator with a, let's say, a jaunty view of individual rights, which I, which I don't, which I don't believe is in the mainstream of the law enforcement community. But there are a few of those isolated incidents out there. The amount of information they can get off your phone and for very little trouble and very little time is just awe inspiring. And so this is this is if 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 I turned off uh, the the feature where you tur where you wipe your phone after after uh, ten failed password attempts a couple of weeks ago when that uh, uh, when that iCloud breach happened, uh, I iCloud problem happened. Now I've turned it back on. Say I would like to see the idea of like a very of a bad lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally yes. erasing my entire phone and not being able to get it back. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, uh, you're, you're right to laugh. It may be disinformation, but uh, according to uh, the Department of Justice's director of the cyber crime lab at the computer crime and intellectual property section in the DOJ said, I can tell you from the Department of Justice perspective, if that drive is encrypted, you're done. When conducting criminal investigations, if you pull the power on a drive that is whole disk encrypted, you have lost any chance of recovering that data. Again, it could be disinformation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this is Simpson Garfinkel, who's very, I think, very good on uh, security issues uh, and so forth. Uh, well, he says Apple's had... security architecture is so sturdy and so tightly woven into its hardware and software that it is both easy for consumers to use encryption on their phone and very difficult for someone to steal the encrypted information. Mm -hmm. well, that was the old cliche, right? Like if you had physical access, it was game over. Right. And, yeah. and now it's easy enough for consumers to flip a bit and have full encryption almost without knowing anything about it. Yeah. They're, they're using 256-bit uh, AES encryption. Um, it's unique. The AES key in each iPad or iPhone is unique to each device and is not recorded by Apple or any of its suppliers. Burning these keys into the silicon prevents them from being tampered with or bypassed and guarantees they can be accessed only by the AES engine. Yeah. So Simpson says, what this means in practice is when iOS devices are turned off, the copy of the encryption key in the computer's accessible memory is erased. It's no longer preserved. That's why an investigator who gets a suspect's phone would have to try all possible keys, the task deemed impossible by the NSA. Again, <laughs> that's what they say. This is this is this is the X factor that keeps us buying Apple stuff again and again and again. <laughs> That's the, the, the stuff that we 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 can't really evaluate uh, so much of the thinking that goes into uh, Apple features, but you know that at some point somebody has thought long. Hope, <laughs> except for again these outlying cases, engineers at Apple think long and hard about well, if this is going to be secure, we have to make it secure. And here is how to do that, and it's being done at the OS level, at the at the storage level, and at the hardware level, all working together so that if we promise our customers that your data is secure, it is secure. I don't think there's any other company, technology company, where you have that sort of implicit understanding that there's an excellent chance that they didn't, that this company did not screw this feature up. Yeah. So, uh, well, and they did until the, four, the 3GS came out. But once the 3GS yeah. was out, right. the pin key, so when you, when you use your pin key, that locks it and encrypts it. And unless they can brute force the pin key or you give it to them, and by the way, I have to say, law <laughs> every time I talk to law enforcement, they say, well, you know, most of the time these guys just give us their keys. You mm -hmm. know, they want to cooperate. They give us the keys. So most of the time, I don't think they're all that worried about it. Um, uh, but here's the deal. Um, the software to brute force has to be run on the phone itself, limiting the guessing speed to 80 milliseconds per pin number. Trying all four-digit pins requires a mere 13 minutes. For four digits, if the user chooses a six-digit pin, 22 hours, nine-digit pin, two and a half years, 
10-digit PIN 25 years. You remember they also added not just the PIN, you can switch it to an alphanumeric password now as well. If you Which want would be very protection. effective. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, something that, uh, there's no crooks listening to this show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. But no. uh, but uh, I, a crook is not going to, and this is the other thing law enforcement always tells me, these guys are idiots. This is, you know, <laughs> smart person doesn't become a crook. So I know that, that everybody's listening to this show is a smart person. So, but if you have private stuff on your phone and you want to keep it private, use a 10-digit numeric pin or better yet, turn on the alphanumerics. And uh, I think eight, eight alphanumerics would be more than enough to, uh, to lock it down. Mm. As long as it's not, you know, something they can guess. All right. Thinner, higher capacity battery, 3.8 volts, 1,440 milliamp hours. You know, I have to say when I compare that to let's say the twenty five hundred milliamp hours in an, in a Galaxy Note, or I think the, the uh, S three is Max. yeah the Razer Max. This is uh, my battery here is uh, I think it's twenty one hundred million milliamp hours. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but I guess for a three and a half inch screen for that mm -hmm. little iPhone, that's that's quite a bit. Yeah, well, and, 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 and also it, it comes down to how the, how Apple translates that into actual actual productive life. Right. They're doing a lot of things underneath the hood that might be better. They don't, may not necessarily need a bigger battery to do what they need to do. Yeah, this is twenty one hundred uh, milliamp hours. All they they need to cover LTE. They need to cover the bigger screen because it should be according to rumor eleven thirty six instead of nine sixty high, and they need to cover the A five X chip instead of the A five chip. So those are the three battery drains. In a way, this is for. this is a uh, you know kudos to Apple that they're able to get such good battery life on on uh, much smaller capacity batteries. Yeah, fourteen hundred forty milliamp hours is not huge by any means. They should have a way better LTE chip on the new iPhone than they had with the iPad three. It right. should be maybe an on die chip by now. Yeah, they're saying it'll still probably be the A five. Maybe they'll call it the A five X because it'll have a few extra things. Kyle is uh, Kyle. I'm sorry, I'm thinking. Confusing you with Kyle Williams. <laughs> Renee Ritchie, does that uh, conform with what you've heard? Well, the iPad 3 had an A5X chip, and oh, it was okay. mostly the quad-core GPU was the big addition to it. And right. so far, Apple has put the previous iPad uh -huh. chip in the new iPhone. They might mess it around a little bit because it's smaller, doesn't have to push around as many pixels, but it's a good bet. Would yeah. they need quad-core, or maybe they would stick for battery life, stick with the, a, a, a dual-core A4? Well, the quad core is only on the GPU, and I believe it's only ah. for specifics. I believe AirPlay uses one of the cores, and Apple yeah. usually doesn't just put specs in for specs. And they don't even tell you the right. specs. They'll tell you the feature. Like, they won't say NFC. They'll say buy at Starbucks. They won't say quad core graphics. <laughs> they'll say AirPlay. So yeah. they'll power them down and turn them on if they need them. The other, the other thing is that remember that Apple, more than any other phone manufacturer, they don't imagine that you're going to be using your phone as a handheld device. They also want you to be using it as a feeder of video and gaming for an Apple TV or, or an Apple space bar TV. Right, right. So it has to do it. I think it's reasonable to say it has to do everything the iPad 3 does. Yeah, and the iPad much. 3, if you remember, you that if you just use that as a Wi-Fi hotspot, it'll go for 24 hours, which right. is... Well, it's got a lot more room for a battery. On LTE. Yeah, I take absolutely. it back. It doesn't have to do everything the iPad 3 does. It can't go that long, obviously. Right. Um, it, go ahead. It does, it does suggest kind of a point, though. Is there any reason in which Apple would make their iPhone a little bit thicker? If engineers came up to them and said that we, need, we feel as though we need to put LTE in or we need to support this larger screen, the only way to do this is to make it 1.2 millimeters thicker than last year's model. Would that, would that be a source of friction or stiction against adding a feature that they were on, a little bit on the fence about to begin with? Mm -hmm. well, the new iPad is a millimeter or so thicker. That's they were right. willing to make that compromise. But I That's think right. with the iPhone, instead of going thicker, it's going to be a little bit bigger. The, nine, the 16 by 9 right. screen will make it a little bit taller. So instead of flattening it out the entire length and width, they're just going to push it up and that'll make more room for the battery. So instead of the thickness, you're getting height. Mm. This is a, a little bit more in the, um, not far-fetched, but uh, less credible rumor. This comes from NowhereElse.fr, which has a notoriously bad record. <laughs> <laughs> one of those exotic, one of the, one of the, one of those blue chip .fr URLs, yes. <laughs> uh, I can't read French, so I'm looking at the Mac rumors story about the nine-pin connector. Uh, these are re reportedly pictures of the new connector, and, and you see at the top there is a USB connector just to give you a sense of size. Uh, it's small. It's, uh, it's teensy-weensy. And uh, apparently the, the one that we're looking at doesn't have nine, but has eight pins. 
And the ring is counted as the ninth. The ring is the ninth. Yeah. The ring is the grounding pin, so it is a nine-pin connector. I do read, I'm in Montreal, so I do read French, and I, I looked it over, and we heard that at, back in February, we heard Apple was switching to a miniaturized dock. The same way they're doing the nano SIM and some other things, they want right. to save as much room for battery as possible. But the pin numbers, I think TechCrunch said 19, and iLounge said 8, and then... Um, uh, 9 to 5 Mac, Mark Gurman found references in iOS 6 to a 9 pin connector, which sounds right. It sounds like 8 pins plus the uh, the ring around it. And they might be some, you might have two sets of 8 pins so you can plug it in upside down ah. or right side up. That would be nice because that's a I real pain with the uh, micro USB. You got to get it just right. Yeah. And I'm always flipping it around. I spent about There's a day a going through 30 pins. To, and, and the th Apple's 30 pin connector is under NDA for their dock partner program. So it's not always easy to find that information about it. But they had a lot of legacy pins. They had two reserved pins and they have line in, line out, left and right. Uh, they have a lot of things in there. Firewire became HDMI, so you can't just ditch the old Firewire pins. But uh, USB, they could get down to four. HDMI, they could get down to four. They usually have a proprietary pin uh, that detects what kind of accessory it is. So it's, it's, it sounds possible that they could actually get it that small. It sounds tight. Yeah. So when you just described it, four plus four is eight. Plus ground. I mean, the, the proprietary pin, do they have room for it? Well, that's USB would have ground, data in, data I see. out, and, um, and, and power. They so one of the four USBs is the ground. So that's four. Yeah. And, and then, HDMI it needs uh, data and it needs clock. It needs two data, two clock, and it could share the ground with the USB. So that's got to be four. So now yeah. we got eight. And then uh, there's a special pin that Ooh. says, I am not compatible. Yes. <laughs> the I am not compatible pin. <laughs> the HDCP <laughs> warning of dock connectors. A, 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 a special pin devoted only to ruining your day and sending you back to the store for a new $80 speaker dock. So would this give us all the capabilities of the 30-pin port? Not the analog audio, oh. obviously. We don't need that and anymore. The 30-pin also had serial in, serial out, which don't not very that. many people use. But yeah, so they would, you would need a better Actually, breakout box. scientific uh, instrumentation using the 30-pin yes. port would need that. Yes. I guess it could switch to US. Now. They could use USB instead. Yeah, they would have basically Apple would be outsourcing that component to right. the accessory maker. Mm. And converting they converting the serial data to USB. Yeah. And maybe HDMI yeah. could be broken out into old style like analog. I don't know if they still do compo uh, composite and component, but it's theoretically possible. There is a uh, HDMI compatible USB micro USB port. Uh, Apple prefers, prefers to provide a dongle for the European Union's uh, micro USB laws instead of <laughs> a connector. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, though. I mean, this is USB and HDMI. They could have used a micro. It sounds like they could have. Maybe there's that one extra I don't work with you pin that we couldn't fit <laughs> in there. And they also have changed the pins around. Uh, the 30 pin has changed significantly since it was first right. introduced. I mean, they ditched six FireWire pins right. uh, and they added four HDMI pins. But, so but still, it begs the question, if they're going to do a nine pin connector, why didn't they just do micro USB? You still have that dock licensing. I mean, you could, you could theoretically put a lot of stuff in software now too. I mean, you could have a lot of that abstracted out of the actual physical connector. Uh, but I think Apple likes to be the, what's, what's the politest way of putting it? The captain of their own destiny. <laughs> I think that's a mistake. Have, do we know anything about the adapter, the 9-pin to 30-pin adapter? Uh, we heard there will be one because uh, immediately, of course, people heard of course that they panic that they would be yeah. throwing out their, their accessories in the garbage. But it sounds like it'll work for cables. It may not work for things that had physical sizes that required the phone plugged in very tightly. But for anything that's a cable or had space for the connector, you would just slip it in between the old dock and the new can't one. Tell me how I tell you how many devices I have where yeah. you with a thirty pin dock. Yeah. But that's but that's but that's a very easy, easily mechanically solvable problem. I mean, you're going to see a Kickstarter within three seconds of uh, of, of that release saying here is a, here is a little mini uh, platform of CNC aluminum that you just simply lay the do lay the adapter into and it'll be it'll give you mechanical support between whatever you've already docked it into to whatever you're about to add things to. I and mini display I, I, port, MagSafe too. Apple's been doing this historically. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I know. And it, and, it, and it works out. It's it's a bummer for when you when you've had this this uh, this clock radio for about a year and a half, two years, and it's been working great. It's a bummer if you've got a hardwired dock in your car, but this is I, this is one. Of the, and you know that I'm not a fan of of uh, Apple 
indiscriminately decided to, to drop a, a popular port. But uh, and when it when it comes to the iPhone, when it comes to a device that's, that's this small, where every millimeter of space is so important and so valuable and such a cause of fighting, I believe, inside of engineering on can we get this area for this? Can we put this feature in here? Can we use this chip? I think that, yeah, I mean, at, at some point, if they really want to keep moving the iPhone forward, they're going to have to get rid of that big harmonica connector. And they have things like Wi-Fi sync and AirPlay now. So over yeah. the air is handling a lot of what the cable used to. And to your point, Leo, I think an Apple vernacular, it would be, and unlike micro USB, our connector is symmetrical. So it doesn't, so it's easier. <laughs> to plug in. Yeah. That would be, that would be a winning point, actually. That would, I wouldn't, that's, uh, that's something in its favor. Yeah. Um, Gizmodo had a piece. Let me just go back to this and see where they got it from. Cause I doubt they made this table. Uh, that shows all the different pinouts. Uh, this is from... I mean, most of those, in my experience, weren't... I, w I went through a ton of them last week, and most aren't accurate because the latest version, again, is under Apple's dock partner program, and uh, no one wants Nobody to can know. Yeah. yeah. No one wants to risk but this, violating But wait them. a minute. No, now, wait a minute. Now, if would it make any difference to you if I told you this was from pinouts.ru? Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, they're, they're a good source, but I believe their latest still has the FireWire pins, which uh, I have switched to HDMI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look, there's S video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of garbageio on here. So the I guess unknown they could port do it. on their list is a video port too. So they had tons of video ports. Isn't that funny? <laughs> well, yeah. Remember that? I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I can remember back to all the things, all the weird. Remember, you could co connect an iPod to TV with a special yep. S video dock and all of that. And that's all legacy stuff that's still in yep. there. No, you know what? They, ha I understand. It makes a lot of sense. You make more room. You get rid of a lot of legacy that nobody's been using for years. Um, but if, and I keep saying this, so I'll say it one more time, and I'm never going to say this again. If <laughs> Apple is, in fact, looking over its shoulder as the little Samsung Galaxy S3 is catching up, is this the right time to give Apple users one more reason to make a switch? I don't think so. Okay. I, 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 I think that the 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 the... the central theme of Apple's story is always that they're going to do, they, they have a clear vision of where they want to go and the product they want to make. And barring real information that this is going to be the, like, a, a, using the Titanic to ship carloads of Edsel's uh, across the ocean, uh, Apple is going to go ahead and do that. I don't, uh, it, and it, they're they're ready to be proved wrong when they believe in something. But they're going to go if they really believe that this is the right way to go. They're just going to go ahead and do it. And we are uh, agreed and, now that it's nine pins, not nineteen. I mean, it depends if, if it's really bi-directional, are they going to call it 60? I mean, I, we'll have to wait and see what they what they what language they use for it. But I think again, Apple's not going to tell us how many pins it is. They don't think we should care or worry about that. Yeah, no, it's not. I'll just say it works. This is not. The interesting not the thing pins is, we heard they're going to do it across the line, uh, like not just on the iPhone 5, but all the iOS devices will be updated to support. Well, the that's new the other interesting dock. rumor that they'll they'll announce new iPads with this new uh, nine-pin connector. Which they've, I mean, historically, they've they switched the Infineon baseband chip mid-run on the, I forget it was a 4 or the 4S, and they've they've, they've done small technical changes to phones mid-life before, and it's probably again going to be, oh, the new versions just have a mic, they're not going to make a big deal about it. Even if they do other things, like improving the thermals or something, they'll probably just say, oh, it's the same iPad you bought six months ago, you don't have to worry about it, but if you buy it now, it has this new connector right. on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, my iPhone 4S is such an integral part of my Sonos system with the Sonos dock, and it's how I listen to audiobooks and stuff. I'm just going to, I'll keep my 4S. Yeah. Big deal. I don't need a new iPhone. We're going to take a break, come back with more. We've got uh, the lovely and talented Rene Ritchie. I didn't realize you were in Montreal. That's I cool. Am. That's neat. Nice city of imore.com. Do I have to say Rene Ritchie? On peut parler français si tu veux, Leo. Oh, ooh. It's so <laughs> sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and Monsieur Randy Anatko. Oh, la, la. Uh, Bruce and Galaja. <laughs> <laughs> well, Inako is, uh, is Russian, right? Uh, according to all the Russian people I've ever met, yes. They don't, <laughs> when I tell them that my grandparents emigrated from a country other than Russia, they say, oh no, cannot possibly no, be from that country. You are it's Russian. Either, it's either Ukrainian or great Russian. You, you are one this? of us. One of us. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's like I said, my name is Jablankowicz, but no, there are no Polish people or Jews anywhere in my background. It's like they will not believe that <laughs> no, I'm telling them it's true. You're Russian. Khenatko. Of course you are Russian. You are built for winter combat. I can <laughs> well, see this. Take a look at him. My God, if he put a fleece hat on, we'd, we'd say, Tovarish. 
The premier is in wonderful health. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can see you on the wall up. on the May Day in Red Square going, yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. Come back with more with Andy Inotko and Rene Rishi. But first, a word from Fresh Books, the easy online invoice. This is this is an example of cloud done right. Uh, when, in fact, when I first started using Fresh Books to do my invoicing, I didn't even really. I don't think the word cloud was in wide use. I didn't think of it as cloud invoicing. I just thought this is great. You you go to FreshBooks.com. You upload your logo. Prints very professional. Uh, invoice prints now well you can print but what but, but it emails these invoices and at first i was a little nervous now remember this is when i first started using this when they first started in 2004 i thought oh eight years ago oh nobody's everybody wants paper invoices you know i was surprised no they were very happy with those one of the things i liked you'll like this renee currency's no problem so if i was invoicing rogers in canada which i was i could do it in canadian dollars it automatically made the conversion i loved that uh and now one of the things i really like about fresh books is that uh, that email has a pay now button. And I'll tell you, uh, it turns out your clients actually do want to pay you. Who knew? It's just as much of a pain for them <laughs> to pay you as it was for you to print out and mail invoices. So if they have a pay now button, they pay. So it saves you time with easy invoicing creation. And it, by the way, preserves the invoice uh, so you can just, re you know, for each month, new month, you just new month. If you do hours, it's great for that. They have an iPhone app, but they also have a web app that will do time and hours and then automatically put it in the invoice so you don't have to do any calculations. As I said, the currencies makes that easy as well. You get paid faster because of the online payments. If the, you have a client who's slow pay, no problem. They automatically will uh, do invoice follow-ups. You could set that up in seconds. And you never, uh, you know, you can always see from your dashboard who owes you money, who's paid. So this is really, really slick and very professional. You're just going to love FreshBooks. For small businesses, this is a fabulous, fabulous thing. I want you to try it right now. Three and a half million people like me discovered FreshBooks and have abused it. And I want you to join that group. You could try it free right now for 30 days of unlimited use. All these features you see at FreshBooks.com. You can have as many invoices, as many clients, even as many uh, account, you know account users as you need. This that's very helpful if you have other people in the business. They will if send physical invoices. They'll print them out for a small fee and mail them. So go to FreshBooks.com and give it a try today. I really am a fan, and uh, I'll tell you, uh, it was just a lifesaver when I discovered it. FreshBooks. Dot com. And if they ask, I don't know if they ask. If they ask, just say, hey, I heard it on MacBreak. And that way everybody will be happy. Happy, happy, happy. Sad to say. Uh, you know, one of the things that we learned uh, on Steve Jobs' death last year was that he had chosen for his kids to have a kind of normal house in normal suburban Palo Alto. And, and, and you know, they lived comfortably, but they weren't behind a wall. And uh, now I'm sad to say... Uh, uh, I have to I admit when I saw the house, I thought, hey, that just seems like he should have had <laughs> something. He should have had a wall, a uh, gate, yeah. a gate, something, nothing. And, and, and no, nothing ever happened while Steve was around. But um, apparently in uh, July, the house was burglarized. A, th uh, a thief stole $60,000 worth of computers and personal items. Uh, good news. No, you know, uh, nobody was hurt, of course. And they do have a suspect who was arrested. Um, by the uh, Silicon Valley Tech Crimes, High Tech Crimes Unit, uh, is, and is in jail waiting a court date later this month. And it doesn't sound like Steve Jobs' house was targeted. It was just part of an ongoing, I think they said 63% increase in yeah. burglaries in the, in the community. They asked him, they said, did you know that was Steve Jobs' house? He said, no, really? <laughs> I should be. <laughs> oh, I was listening to Mac Break Weekly the other day. <laughs> and they said... The house was easily accessed. No, he didn't know that. He had no idea. He just said, no, I saw the house and I, I went in. I'm telling you, they're not the smartest people, these crooks. Not the smartest people. Ah, oh, gosh. I, <laughs> I, don't, I almost don't want to start this conversation. The uh, Apple's uh, case has rested. Samsung now begins its a portion of the trial, the Apple versus Samsung lawsuit. Every week now, we should make a special, you know, like um, Nightline style. Apple versus Samsung, day seven. I, 
I, John no, I Stewart think we style. More, yeah, we should make it more like the Olympic coverage. There should there should also have been an opening ceremonies and a closing ceremonies. <laughs> We're a parading of the lawyers. <laughs> And chariots of fire everywhere. There are as many lawyers as there were nations in the Olympics, I believe. Paul McCartney would still say, sing Hey Jude at the end of it. Uh, and the budget uh, was probably similar. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, this is, it's, it's yielding a treasure trove of documents. Lots of interesting I mean, any, stuff. Anybody who's interested in not only the history of Apple, but also just the philosophies of Apple, how they, what their priorities are, how they develop products. We're just getting boatload after boatload of primary documents being offered up by Apple directly and also testimony from the key players and most of the decisions Apple's making in the past four or five years. It's like I've got a folder of PDF after PDF after PDF mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I, I do research for what I write. I do research for the show. But more than anything else, it's like I really want to. This is fascinating stuff. I want to read all of this. Right. I hope it's this trial goes on forever. I mean, like Apple does not just open the kimono and it shows that I think whether you agree with Apple or not, the, the passion they have in prosecuting this case that they are willing to show historical documentation that they probably would never, ever have shown otherwise. Yeah, th I mean, th this really is the equivalent of, of you know, the, of the mayor saying, I could not have possibly murdered that person because I was in bed with my hooker prostitute mistress at the time. Here's the video of <laughs> Then you, Where, you wait know, a minute! I didn't see that PDF. Where? <laughs> <laughs> see, that's that's why you don't just read the summaries you see on the on the blogs. You actually have to download, go to Scribd. Um, I'd like I'd like to introduce Exhibit Double A. Like, ew, ew, I don't want to see that. Go see. So, um, Apple wants two and a half billion dollars. This is interesting. They say now we didn't just make that number up. It took literally what did they say? Millions of uh, calculations. Yeah, and like millions of dollars. Place. And millions of dollars, like two and a half million dollars to figure out how much Samsung owes us. Yeah. <laughs> it also was interesting because they pointed out that they tried to do a license with Samsung and oh, a yeah. Apple broke down that they have three kinds of patents. The kind of uh, standards, essential friend patents and the computing patents and the design patents. And they are incredibly loath to license out anything that they think gives them a distinctive or competitive advantage. And according to them, they believed Samsung was an important manufacturing partner. So they went there and they broke down sort of, this is how much you owe us, but we'll give you 20% off because of our deal with Microsoft and 20% off because we like you. And uh -huh. it, was, it was very odd from an Apple point of view. Yeah, and that Microsoft had licensed these patents uh -huh. But the deal was they could, which might well, tell you something license. about cross license, but tell me, tell you something about why the why Windows phone looks like it does. The deal was you can use these, but it can't look anything like an iPhone. And for the better, I mean, you put a, I love the, new, the Lumia 900. It's fantastic looking. And I even like Android slide to unlock because they couldn't do what the iPhone does. I think there's a case to be made that things that don't look the same are better for us as consumers. Yeah, it did. It, you know, I, I've been giving Microsoft a huge amount of credit for saying, thinking differently and, and doing something different with the Windows phone. Maybe they had to. <laughs> Maybe well, I that, mean, they would. They, they would. They wouldn't have done that if they felt. I, I think Samsung and Microsoft were both in the exact same position, where they had here's the here's the amount of exposure that we have. If we had to fight this out in court. How 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 attached are we to the idea of doing something that is vaguely similar to an iPhone? Uh, if if Microsoft said that we can certainly agree to this because we weren't planning on doing anything like that anyway, that's perfectly fine. If Samsung says no, you're, we, we're not we're we're not doing anything that any other tech company is not entitled to. Do you know? Go go go! Beat bricks, and so and the one of the PDFs I was talking about is the the proposal document, the presentation that Apple made to Samsung at the point which they're saying, look, we know we know that you stole the stuff from Apple from iPhone. We don't want to go the, go to the mattresses over this because we count on Samsung as a, a trusted and valuable supplier. So here's how we're going to broker, broker this truce. And so you click on this document, and say, oh, isn't that good? Because they tried to keep this out of the courts. But then you look at article after article after article in this presentation where they are essentially saying that any phone that does not a flip phone with a liquid crystal display and a, and a, and a, and a, and a 10 digit pad is infringing on the iPhone. If you, there's a table on page like 18 I've got in front of me right now that essentially says that it, breaking down how much that, uh, the licensing should be for the year 2010. And Apple was expecting that Samsung owes Apple $53 million off of Symbian phones. The, I mean, the, nine bucks the, the, for the, windows blackjack. 
Yeah, it's like well, like they're they're breaking it down. So here's if 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 it runs Android, then we you owe us money. If it doesn't use a Microsoft operating system, it you owe us money. There is almost no metric in this document in which Apple says that you can sell a cell phone that is in any way could be called a smartphone and not owe Apple money. I mean, this is a document that pretends as though the Trio never existed. That per, that pretends that the BlackBerry phone never existed. Even again, even these phone, even these phones that have an integrated keyboard, at some point, well, we'll get you a discount but you still owe us money because it has a color screen it could do other things other it is almost a quote from the presentation that anything that any phone that is more than just a phone at some point you need to give us some money for this I do think that it's, that is, however, that's when you walk into the car dealership and make the incredible lowball offer because you know it'll never be accepted, but you want to set up a good bargaining position. And I think also yeah. what you said about Microsoft versus Samsung, the big difference is that Microsoft is funded almost entirely by Windows and uh, Office money, where if you look at who makes money in Android, there's Samsung... HTC makes almost none and everybody else loses money. So for Microsoft, not copying anything from Apple is probably, you know, doesn't matter. But for Samsung, yeah. if they believe that being the being a, an iPhone not made by Apple is the reason they're making the amount of profit that they're making, they will never, ever, ever want to give that up because that to them becomes the reason for their success. Yeah. But there's, but there's also, a, there's, uh, this is a great topic for discussion because so much of this is conceptual. So much of this is debatable and trying to understand what invention is like and what developing a product li is like. There is certainly a position to be argued, especially with the, with the, uh, tw the 2010 Samsung Galaxy that Samsung said, if there's any idea that we like from the iPhone, even visually, we will t simply take it and put it into our phone. On the uh, another way to read these documents is to simply say that if someone came up to your you know your 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 hamburger stand if McDonald's came up to your hamburger stand and said we don't want to sue you but we came up with the idea of a of a meat patty and in the middle yeah, of bread with vegetables ours. and cheese yeah. that's ours now we do, again because we we, we'll we don't want to be that. bullies here if you just give us eight dollars for every hamburger you right. sell we can settle this amicably I think Apple it's, wanted it's thirty bucks didn't they. It, it, 30 it for depends a phone, on, it, 40 for a tablet. Yeah. I don't know it, what the, it, the note would depends. be. It would be 35. Yeah, it goes, there's, there's actually, Half again, it's, 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 a, it's a great PDF because it really does break down what they think. There, here's an Android a lot. Full touch $30 device. a phone is a well, lot. And by the way, we would pay for that because they just build that into the price of the phone. What was really interesting for me, though, is that I was trying to think about Samsung. You know, they enter a lot of markets. They don't just make phones or consumer electronics. They make refrigerators and almost anything you can imagine. And I was thinking if Samsung decided to get into the refrigerator business, they would look at refrigerators and make something mm -hmm. like it because familiarity is a feature. Have you, you ever seen a Samsung customer. refrigerator? It looks just oh. like General Electric's. But what I found out, I was corrected like by a... some of our readers who said that you actually have to license refrigerators. You have to license oh. French doors and you have to license <laughs> freezers at the bottom. And it, it, it is exactly like the consumer electronics wow. business. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, we've only heard, by the way, uh, Apple rested on what, Friday? And now Mon starting this week, Samsung uh, is testimony has begun. So remember, we've only heard the first, you know, the Apple, the pro Apple stuff. We're going to hear testimony in Samsung's favor. In fact, yesterday, uh, they began their defense uh, with uh, witnesses, a pair of witnesses, who created technology similar to the Apple patents well before the Apple yeah. iPhone. You could tell if you look at it. Uh, I'm showing a picture of the HP iPack and something right. called the iMate smartphone uh, that had rubber banding, pinch to zoom, launched. Uh, this is UI zooming. This came from Microsoft, actually. The thing that's interesting, though, too, is, I mean, there's going to be a legal definition of steal, of, of copying. Is it a legal copy or an illegal copy? And I think some people are, want to pretend that Apple's completely wrong or Samsung is completely wrong, and there's no middle ground. And I think, for example, if you look at HTC or Motorola, that's a very different case than Samsung. You look, their cables look like dock cables. Their AC adapters look like Apple AC adapters. Uh, the Blackjack looked like a BlackBerry before Apple even came on the market. Right. And I think you could make a case that Samsung might have gone a step too far. Maybe it's not to the extent Apple Apple said, but maybe it is a step too far, but and you want to find some middle ground in between. Is the jury uh, given that option? Uh, doesn't the jury have to find one way or the other? Isn't it I black and white, or can the jury? I, I guess the jury could say, "Well, we find in favor of Apple, we we'll give you a penny," or we get, you know, these patents were violated, this trade yeah. dress was violated, but not this one. All right. All right. Well, I, you know, it's too early to to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a straw poll. I like these straw polls. So strawpoll.me. Thanks to Dan Dirks for writing this. He wrote it for NSFW, but we're using it a lot. Strawpoll.me slash 2310. If you 
and I understand we haven't heard from Samsung yet, but you, if you were on the Apple versus Samsung jury, would you give Apple the win and two and a half billion? Whoops. Yes, Samsung yeah. stole from Apple. I know, I know. This isn't how the choice is going to come down, but <laughs> no, Samsung innovated. It didn't copy. I'm sorry, I was asleep. What did you say? <laughs> so those are your three choices. I think three favor three, you know, reasonable choices. Now, of course, we're watching this is Mac Break Weekly, and I would fully expect the Macintosh crowd to uh fall. And you know, it's interesting though. Quite it's uh well, this is well we'll let, we'll let the votes continue. I'll tell you what. We're gonna do it. We'll pause for a commercial. Continue to vote. Strawpoll.me slash twenty three ten. And when we come back from the commercial, we'll see uh we'll see what you, the jury would say i don't know i wouldn't want to be put in that position to be honest i would i would i would love to review it as andy has all the documents first what i would like leo is i mean i owned a g1 i owned a nexus one Me i too. own the nexus 7 now mm -hmm. i'm not attracted to samsung phones because i think apple does that kind of phone better and you, you can again people can like or not like apple but if you look at the ipod the mac the command line interface with the apple too apple has this a history of making products that are breakthrough at a consumer level. And even Sony with the Trinitron and the Walkman, I want Samsung to make that kind of universe denting product. I want them to not just make a technically superior phone, but I want them to take their place amongst the giants of consumer electronics. And I think this might be a good chance for them to do that with a Galaxy 4 or whatever they do. I next. like the Galaxy 3 plenty oh, good. I don't know, uh, I, you know. I don't. I, I think that I think the Galaxy Three is a distinct product. We we, we talk for for a Mac show. We talk a lot about the Samsung. We, spent, so we, we, so we so don't so need to talk so, so, so much I'm, about I'm, it. I'm I'm, I'm loath to continue to talk about it. But yeah. what what I would like to see on on, on the same vent is. I would like to see Apple make some acknowledgement that even the iPhone was built on the inspiration of successful products that came before it. They did not. But what when I was reading through this the the, the uh, document that came across uh, yesterday, page after page after page seemed to create the impression that. There was, you know, you know that seventy-five percent of all fo all cell phones had an actual extendable extendable handset with a curly cord that went to the rest of it until Apple came in and solved Smoke everything signals. for everybody. Right. Yeah, and, and as opposed to no, again, there was a whole family of big screen, like full screen uh, stylus based, but still touch based computers before then. The concept of a machine of a phone that is far far more of a phone and more of a hybrid between a computer and a phone had been had been set into bedrock while they were developing uh, the iPhone before they actually went on with it. The, the the helpful thing that comes comes across from that document, I think this, I really think it's one of the key documents that's come to light in the past week, is that very correctly, Apple's philosophy here is that while developing the iPhone, they were planting crops. Uh, those crops being the patents that are associated with this type of a device. Uh, and their feeling, I think, as the after the release of the iPhone is that they planted these seeds, they tilled the soil, they watered it, they tended the plants. Now the crops have come in. Now they've got corn as high as the elephant's eye. This is now, it's, it's time to harvest, so to speak, uh, not, which is not to, not to say that they want to, st their purpose is to stick up everybody like, a, like they're a patent troll, but they feel as though the reason why they tended to these crops so carefully is so that they could use this for their own, uh, their own advantage. So that if someone came up with a product that was, they felt was too similar to the iPhone, let's set aside the emotional question about whether it was stolen or not stolen, whether it's just evolution or whatever. When, if someone comes up with a product that is too, that is uncomfortably similar to the iPhone, they have have this wonderful field of resources that they can use to try to get some pressure to, you know, kind of get them to ease off on that a little bit. Yeah. So I don't think that I don't think it's hatred. I don't think that it's they're trying to bully anybody. I feel as though again they've got bushels and bushels of corn. Then they're, now they're going to be now 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 it's time to now. I was going to say something, make a joke that was a really good pun, but we're about something that you do with corn. But I'm not going to say that. Apple said that. Apple said that. They were just upset that Google gave it away to everybody, and that was the the crux of their. Uh, well, I guess of Steve Jobs' impetus um, yeah. for suing. And, well, there was Xerox Park before there was Mac. Apple is just good at taking existing technologies and making them. Um, main yeah, screen. I don't know if it changes the case or not, but I mean, Apple took notifications from Android and put yep. it in the iOS 5. I mean, it, it, yeah. I think there's cross-pollinization. Uh, yeah. The I, real I, question I, comes to me down to me with to uh, to something that we can't know, which is intent. If Apple merely wants to harvest its corn, fine. If Apple wants to put Samsung out of business, I'm not so happy about that. Well, I think yeah. Microsoft I see, I, I wants guess, to make Android more expensive and Apple wants to make it yes, less usable. And that's how they both want to reduce competition. 
And I yeah. think that that's I, not okay. I think it's fine to say, I want to license it. We invented it. You should license it. But it's, I don't think it's okay to say, oh, we want to put you out of business because we don't like the competition. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm largely reacting to. I remember remember how years and years and years one of the one of the clubs in the in the bag of the person who wants to uh, convince people that Apple is not a great company is that oh well their one great thing they did was that was influential was the Macintosh and they stole that from Xerox, and yeah. you have to raise your hand and say well no they didn't I mean they first of all they it. licensed it a well a they licensed it but if you compared what they were exposed to to what they built inspired by that the two things are have some superficial. Uh, uh, interactions, but they're not. They, they, he didn't. They didn't steal anything from anybody. Similarly, I think that when you look at a sufficiently, when you look at uh, let's let's expand this beyond Android. One, any one of the devices that Apple in this document claims is stolen for it has Apple technology. I just feel the exact same sort of reaction as I did when I had, when I was defending Apple against this thing. Well, no, this is really no. There's very very little similarity between this iPhone and this device you're saying was stolen from iPhone and the, from from Apple and that uh, is is a generator of licenses. So that's this is. This Samsung, a lot of I get a little bit, a little bit. Uh, my my ire gets a little bit uh, up when I talk about this sort of stuff. Samsung makes it harder though. I mean, with HTC and Motorola, I think that's absolutely true. But uh, like the, the the photos icon, Apple uses a sunflower on a blue background, so Samsung uses a yellow flower on a blue background. That's totally okay, arbitrary, and those oh. are little silly things that I think when you take, uh, you add the dock cable, you add the AC adapter, you add the Chromebook that looks like a Mac Mini. When taken as a whole, I think that's how Apple presents the case. Oh, I mean, that, you look. It's this is. I, I, I did see the testimony from uh, Ms. Kerr, and uh, it's a. I had never realized that the icon that Samsung had chosen for their uh, Photos app was a sunflower until someone said that it's a sunflower. I mean, there it's a yellow flower that looks completely different from the icon that's on the iPhoto. Yes, it's an arbitrary decision, but if you're really getting down to if you're getting down to that, not talking about the original music icon that was pretty much a, a, a perfectly yeah, blatant absolutely. swipe. You know, then you're saying, are we really going to argue that you're not allowed to use a three-quarter view of a yellow flower because we used a pulled-back version of a centered that sunflower? That really doesn't look our, the same. I got to tell you. But again, it's I mean, not, there's no not, reason to use that icon. And you, there's, well, no re reason, there's no reason There's no reason not to. I mean, if, if, if I, I wish that uh, – I'm sorry. I'm about, to, I'm about to talk out of my depth here. That, uh, one of the problems of – all of us trying to follow this is that we're not there in the courtroom. We're not right. seeing the entire story yeah. that's being told by both sides. Right. And so it's very, very easy. Uh, I'm trying not to fall victim to this uh, my, of my own, you know, again, getting reacting to well, this and pieces. Disclaimer, that say, oh, disclaimer really we aren't in the courtroom. We're not the jury. We're not going to make yeah. the decision. But we can have an opinion about it as yeah. uninformed as, it, as we choose to be. And you sounds like you're more informed than most, Andy. You've actually read the documents. Well, there's a, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, if uh, I think that here, I think I can pull this up pretty quickly. There is a, yeah, there, there is a, uh, I'm, I'm preparing like something I'm writing. I'm looking at different quotes. I'm actually reading, I actually find myself reading about authentication of old masters, uh, about the, when, when a new Leonardo da Vinci sketch turns up and now there's an argument whether it exists or not. Um, there is a quote that I pulled up. I'm just pulled, I just pulled it up from uh, from my, my notes. It says, Professor Martin Kemp provides a telling summary and epilogue to the slew of evidence presented in this section, provides a unique moment of realization with our historical discourse. This, this is a quote from uh, a professor Professor Martin Kemp talking about uh, uh, a recently discovered uh, Leonardo da Vinci. No single piece of evidence proves conclusively that the portrait of the woman in profile in colored chalks was executed by Leonardo da Vinci in the mid-1490s at the city is Bianca Sforza. The now secure position of the portrait of Mona Lisa in Leonardo's body of autograph paintings depends on, and this is the money quote, an accumulation of interlocking reasons and, not least, on the way that the painting participates in how we actively see Leonardo as a whole. And I think that that, that, that kind of struck me because that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to yeah. be the entire body of interlocking evidence. And also, how does this thing that Samsung create participate in how we perceive Samsung? How does this thing that Apple built participate in how we foresee Apple uh, as, as an entity? So this is why, uh, you know, I, I, watched, I watched more Olympics than I would care to document. But uh, I'm, 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 uh, the, the same sort of obsessive, like, oh, I got to see this event. Oh, I got to see this piece of evidence is kind of hitting the same thing with, uh, with this trial. Renee has a great, uh, your Sunday editorial at uh, imore.com, everybody should read, where you compare, you say Samsung has a long and storied history of this kind of copying. You mentioned the Blackjack, which was a yeah. copy of the Blackberry. Uh, you show the, you show some some real similarities here. But I think your point, which you you just made, which is that Samsung has an opportunity here to innovate a little bit more. 
Um, I think so. I think they'll take it too. I mean, we saw that with the Galaxy S3 is that they're starting to kind of feel their strength and feel their market position. Yeah. And I think they'll they'll separate themselves rapidly from now that their I mean their brand is so strong. Um, one of my one of my one of the people who writes for us, Crackberry Kevin uh, from Crackberry.com, said that you know, he has an HTC One X, which I actually prefer to the Galaxy S3, and everyone calls it a Galaxy S3 because Samsung's brand <laughs> is so strong now. And I think they're they're going to leverage that to make phones that are. I mean, they're not going to need anything from Apple at yeah. all anytime soon. I do I do like the One X a lot, although uh, I carry the S3. All right, the straw poll give you a chance. You're the jury. You've you've heard the evidence in fragmentary form. Go to straw poll dot me slash 2310 and we will check in and see what the jury the unofficial jury says but we still have more trial at least another week uh, for a samsung to mount its defense so i'm sure we'll hear lots more interesting stuff meanwhile let's talk a little bit about squarespace.com i don't think i make this clear i'm going to make this clear squarespace is web hosting plus software so I think sometimes we talk so much about all that great content management stuff and the, how easy it is to design sites and everything. This is the hosting too. So you really, it's it's everything you need. People will say to me, "How do I want a website? What do I do?" <laughs> it's really simple. You go to squarespace.com. If you buy a year, an annual plan, they'll you can get a custom domain name. They'll set it up. They'll register it for you. They'll build that in. You've got these great templates, so you can design a site that's completely unique. Uh, you get the best hosting ever. We've never yet been able to bring down a Squarespace site, and I think that's pretty special. And now the new Squarespace is putting the best new content management system on this fantastic hosting platform to give you something incredible. Uh, you look at the template. You know what? If you go to squarespace.com, you could try it free for two weeks. Look at the templates. Uh, these are what we call responsive design. That means they adapt to the device that they're on, whether it's a 27-inch iMac or an iPhone or an iPad, every time you give you put an image uh, into your site, it automatically resizes it into all the different forms that you need so that you will work great on any device. Uh, you're, of course, the text resizes. In fact, it's beautiful fonts, 300 plus Google fonts. These are these web fonts that Google does that, um, uh, you know, a Squarespace site will look great even on a retina display. It's automatically retinized, so to speak. I just am a big fan. And I have to tell you, the price is right, too. When you go to squarespace.com, take a look at the uh, the site pricing because they have it, they've simplified it considerably to make it very easy to get a site. So go there, get started, press the Get Started button, try it free for two weeks. You don't need a promo code or anything. You don't even need a credit card. And then when you decide to buy, take a look at their plans. Now, they have monthly plans, but, they, but the uh, best offer, the best deal is the uh, annual plan. $8 a month uh, for the basic site. Look at the $16 a month site. This is, I don't know how they do this. This is their most popular site and for good reason. You get unlimited pages, unlimited galleries, great for photographers, artists, unlimited blogs. That means you have multiple blogs by multiple authors, unlimited bandwidth. Un I don't know of any hosting company that offers this, not at this price. Unlimited storage, unlimited contributors. That means you can do anything you want. You get the custom domain, $16 a month. And if you use our offer code MACBREAK8, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. MACBREAK8 gives you 10% off your first purchase. If it's this plan, that's a, con that's a considerable savings. I think you're going to like it. Squarespace.com. Certainly, if you are looking to set up a website, your first or a new one or a one-off one for a special occasion... Please do yourself a favor. At least try it. Squarespace.com. Easy to get started to get a sense of what it can do. And the new Squarespace is so beautiful. Rewritten from scratch. 50 plus new or improved features. Lots of great new templates. Adaptive design. All of that. HTML5, of course. CSS3, of course. Uh, you can even use JavaScript and, and all of that. Squarespace.com. All right, let's take a look at our uh, straw poll. The votes are in. 660 total votes. And you know, it's closer than I thought it would be. 51% yes, Samsung stole from Apple. And I understand it's an imperfect poll because we didn't give you all the possible choices. But my question was, if you were on the jury, would you give Apple the win and the full amount Apple's asking, $2.5 billion? 51% said yes. 38% said no. 11% were asleep. Actually, if you add the asleep people to people who said no, it's pretty close. Is that one of those Adderall sort of things where they're asleep, but they're not aware they're participating in a poll? 
<laughs> I've been on a jury. The biggest challenge is staying awake. <laughs> In fact, some of the judges uh, don't even do a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> It is, you know, after lunch, two in the afternoon, droning on and on and on. It's not an easy thing. And, I, you know, kudos to the jurors in this trial. It's not a huge, super long trial, but it's but it's challenging. Mm -hmm. They've heard some interesting stuff, too. Can you imagine any, any of the three of us being, like, called for jury duty on that day? And, you know, you, you, you'll want to answer the questions like when they're interviewing you correctly. But, oh, man, I really want to be on this jury. What, what, what question, what, what answer do I give that will not get me thrown off? <laughs> yeah. Do you say that you use an Apple or not? Do you yeah. say what phone you how, use? How, how, do you, how do you find someone who doesn't use Apple at some right. point? It's, it's almost I don't think that they it. probably tried. You know, uh, the, the one jury I was on, which is exactly a year ago. Um, I was surprised at the jury selection process. It was nothing like I thought it would be. I thought they'd, I, first of all, they thought... As the minute I said, I'd, I'm a journalist, and they said, by the way, and there was a tech angle to this uh, this trial. They said, will we be hearing about this after the trial on your show? And I said, yeah. And it still didn't get me off. I wasn't trying to get <laughs> off, but I'm just, I was surprised that that wasn't an issue for them. Um, it's not what, it's, I don't know, you know, I don't, it's a... The law is a mysterious mistress. <laughs> it was between it was between you and another juror who had shoes on his hands. Well, there were <laughs> the some attorney said, "Okay, let's go with the." There were some people. I'm sitting there going, "Please don't pick him. I don't want to sit on a jury with him. Please, please, please." Okay, I did not want to prejudice our kangaroo court by playing this video. <laughs> uh, we've played it on every other show. You know what I'm talking about because, uh, in fact, I'm going to steal it from uh, iMore's site after the 30-second ad, which will be over in just a little bit. This is, <laughs> Isn't, it amazing? Uh, Isn't it amazing? It's mainstream, though, Leo. That's the, I think that's the biggest news to me is that this has actually hit mainstream This is Conan O'Brien. I don't know if yeah. Conan O'Brien counts as mainstream, but um, I think He's his audience is pretty techy. No? It's a younger it's still, audience. It's, tele than anybody, it's television. Any yeah, television is more mainstream than us. So here you go. Conan O'Brien... Uh, on his show last week talking about, yes, the Apple-Samsung lawsuit. And it's good if you can see the video, but those of you listening at home, I think you'll understand what's going on. Apple is claiming that Samsung copied iPhone technology to market its own products. Well, Samsung's vice president of electronics has already released a video that's defending his company. It's a video message defending Samsung. Let's take a look. Hello. Apple's claim that Samsung has copied their technology is an allegation we're vigorously denying. Since we entered the personal electronics space, Samsung has created products that, as you can see, bear no similarity to Apple's. <laughs> Notice the grayer edge of our Galaxy phone. And what about our Galaxy tablet? Not even close. It's not just electronics. Samsung's originality is also on display in our home appliance. I should, I should point out now that he has that he has changed his outfit to a black turtleneck, black jeans. Uh, just, you know, just to give him a, a unique look. Samsung's originality is also on display in our home appliances, whether it's our new microwave oven, <laughs> our Vac Pro vacuum cleaner, <laughs> or eye washer with scroll wheel control. <laughs> Don't believe me? Then come to our retail stores, where you can talk more about our products with a Samsung smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a, lot, a lot of people ask, how does Samsung stay so original, so innovative? It's very simple, really. We stay true to the vision of Samsung founder, Stefan Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're right. I mean, I guess that's the moral of this, Renee, is that it is mainstream. Everybody's aware of this. Yeah, it's, I mean, there, there was some pushback saying that they're showing off the app tray for Android and not the actual home no, no, screen, no, no, but no, no, no. those this are the humor. images that were marketed for those devices. This, this so is comedy. Come on. Yeah. This is comedy. Uh, but it, does, it does illustrate the stakes for both companies. I mean, if Samsung, it, uh, apart, and, apart from the actual court case, there's like public opinion, and that Samsung could walk away from this with a public opinion that they don't do anything interesting that Apple hasn't done two years earlier. If you want the interesting thing, go Apple, you'll get it earlier. Apple is at risk of saying no they're not the reason why their their products are better are only because they will sue anybody who does anything that is even remotely okay uh it, 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 any phone that doesn't have a dial a, a, a dialing dial on it is going to be sued by apple so it's, it's a huge risk it's high stakes companies. on both yeah
The great Andy Hertzfeld, who created the, the Macintosh, posted on his... Uh, he's been posting... In fact, if you're not following him on Google+, you, you should, because he's been posting some really interesting stuff on, um, on his uh, Google+, Plus, including a commercial that Shiat Day made for Apple in 1983 that never aired because Apple said it was... And I think he means by Apple, Steve Jobs, that it was too self-congratulatory. And that's not something we associate with that. <laughs> Here's a little bit of that video. This is from Andy Hertzfeld's blog. Or yeah, we G designed Plus, Macintosh really because we wanted one for ourselves. And we could let, me, let me go full screen on this so we can see the... Yeah, we designed Macintosh really because we wanted one for ourselves and we couldn't get one. <laughs> and Apple turned it into a product That's to Pearl turn Smith. the whole world on to what we've got. God, they really, so young. Mac is a big he extension was. of you know, who we think we are and where we think we're going. And that's why we designed the product. And so we set that's out Andy to Hertzfeld. capture the greatness of Lisa in something uh, affordable to individuals rather than corporations. It had to be easy to manufacture. George Crow. It had to be very reliable because we didn't want our customers to ever have to worry about it failing. <clears throat> and it had to cost roughly one quarter as much as anything I'd ever designed before. Demonstrating a Macintosh Bill is Atkinson. the only way to do it. You got to show somebody i can't really describe it to you in words but if i can get you to sit in front of it and play with it you won't let go of it and i think what you're going to see is that the balance of power is going to shift it's mike murray the balance of power from companies running people to hopefully people running companies we were mm -hmm. just trying to make something Back incredibly great and uh, i think we did uh, I love that he smile. Look, he looks like every guy who ever put a quarter next to mine on every arcade <laughs> version of Dragon's Lair I ever played. I, I love that. That was uh, recorded in October 83, of course, four or five months before uh, the Macintosh was released. Uh, I guess that's not the commercial, but they but the snippets that they were planning on using in a commercial and decided not to. Now, is that, is that like the 1984 commercial? Did we also not see the completed product in that Never video? Never did. Either? Just a motherboard. It's a cl the only part that we ever saw. Um, really, really neat. Really, really neat. Uh, and do do take a look at Andy's uh, Andy Hertzfeld's not Andy Nacos. He's got a great Google Google <laughs> Plus too. But I'm talking about Andy Hertzfeld's Google Plus. Um, he's at Google now, so he's yeah. actually very active on uh, on Google Plus. And apparently, uh, one last story before we get to your tip of the week, uh, Apple. May be giving us new iMacs and uh, Mac Pros. I got an email from somebody, or actually it was a tweet saying, "Why don't you ever talk about the Mac?" And I said, "Don't blame me, blame Apple." <laughs> <laughs> if Apple says something, we'll do it. You talked about the Retina Mac. You gave it their. their I love the, the Retina Mac. There you go. By the way, Otherworld Computing now has announced solid state upgrades for that potentially, you know, un unrepairable. <laughs> Uh, MacBook Retina. So if you're the brave enough, screws on. Yeah, if you're brave enough to open, <laughs> uh, open it, you can put. And you know, it's just a little. I did it on my MacBook Air. It was an easy yeah. thing to do. I have not used my MacBook Air or my last year mm. MacBook Pro since I got the Retina one. It just so completely nice. replaced both of them. It's replaced my Pro. Yeah, it's all I use. Uh, internal configuration. This is from Apple Insider. Daniel Aaron Dilger. Internal configuration files in Mountain Lion make apparent references. To as yet unreleased new generations of iMac, the iMac 13, comma zero, and Mac Pro, Mac Pro 6, comma zero, both in the context of USB booting options, that I think Daniel perhaps reasonably concludes means there will be no optical drive in these new devices for the first time in 20 years. Mm. They got floppied. They got floppied. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know. It's it's, mm -hmm. I, 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 it's a rumor, so I'm not going to react to a rumor. But you, that, that would I, I think that would be an inter a highly interesting move for Apple to make to delete an optical drive from a humongous already a desktop that has room. It, it would be. Well, it would yeah, be how does it help them? It, it, Right. It, it makes it makes sense for the Mac Mini because you want that to be as tiny as possible. Also, you don't want another opening to get gathered dust, given that so many people use these for servers. Makes a hell of a lot of sense. Obvious makes obvious sense for uh, the MacBook Airs. I thought it. Yeah, yeah, for 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 an iMac for a desktop where you have to tell me why did you delete this? Well, but Is remember what, what the first this? iMac they deleted the floppy, and they yeah, but it had I mean, not, there was yeah. room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they had but, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm 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 I don't want to. It's a rumor. 
It yeah, makes it lighter for you to carry your whole iMac to Starbucks, Andy. <laughs> yeah. Couple Again, my, 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 cent, my central thing is always that's fine. I'm not it's, it's not as though like my 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 Italian forebears have been hand manufacturing optical drives for generation after generation. <laughs> you're killing a you're kill you're killing a noble tradition, Apple. It's just that it's just that as a consumer, it's like if you're getting fifteen hundred dollars for me and you're making me go back to a store to buy something for a hundred dollars right. for this thing that yes, I will probably be no, not every day, but certainly a few times a year at, at least, you have to explain to me what the win is for me right. that you're deleting this component. No, that's, 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 that's a general thing. For me. Not that I ever use a super drive in my Mac Pro. The never. new model numbers yeah. usually mean there's new processors and my guess would be that they would use whatever the that's latest the Intel deal. kit yeah. is. Well, yeah. there, we, there's a couple of things that we need to Mac Pro. We need an update. We've got we to gotta put, uh, you know, Thunderbolt in there. Yeah. Uh, duh. And mm -hmm. uh, frankly, Ivy Bridge wouldn't be so bad. Um, there's, you know, the new, Z, the new Xeon uh, is not there. No. Uh, it's just it, it's time, but apparently we, according to uh, Tim Cook, we won't see anything till next year. So that's why I'm using the MacBook Retina. In fact, I'm real close to buying a Thunderbolt display, 27 inch display, yeah. and just making it my desktop. I just did so that. I, I bought the Thunderbolt display, hooked it up, and it's it's a fantastic combination. Yeah, yeah, and it's faster it's, than your Mac Pro. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's a it's a beast. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why that's why if I I think that we should be really really keen to see what Apple decides to do with their desktop machines because they could really delete both the iMac and the desktop Mac uh, and the and the Mac mm -hmm. Pro and simply say, look, our machines are our, our notebooks are so good that we would much rather sell you an eight hundred dollars uh, external screen accessory that lets you keep everything together rather than give you another another power supply, another thing that that sucks juice down, another thing that you have to make room for in your office. It's it's interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not, not that not the next screen would not have a power supply, but no, no, but no, I think they would I think they would they would they would they would be the first to say, why are we selling what right. when why, why don't we just tell you that our laptops are good enough that you can use them as a desktop and produce a product that is makes it elegant to use it uh, use an external display then well, there was a great comment from Sean Blanc who said that iPads are the new laptop and MacBooks are the new desktop. Yeah, I just it's just squishing it down. Yeah. Mm. We're going to take a break and get our tips, picks, and all of that stuff. But first, let's start with an Audible pick of the week. Audible.com, the audio bookstore I love so very much. I've been a member since the year 2000 at audible.com. 500 plus books in my library. And I love that because I just, you know, I put the Audible app on my iPhone or my Android phone or even my Windows phone. And then I can uh, look at any book that I've ever purchased on audible.com and say, oh, you know, gosh. I haven't read A Tale of Two Cities in five years. It's time to read it again. It's just, I just, that's, books, it feels like that's the way to do it, really. Uh, here's the deal. Go to audible.com slash MacBreak right now and pick a book. Your first book is free. Uh, you'll be signing up for the, the gold account. That's a book a month, and your first month's free. Your first book is free, and uh, you can cancel at any time, pay nothing, but the book is yours forever and ever. Audible.com slash Mac break. And I'm just curious, Andy, if you have been reading something, your summer reading list. This was, this is something that I, I just picked out yesterday because, um, I was, uh, Phil Rosenthal is the co-creator of everybody loves Raymond. Uh, and so he has a book called you're lucky. You're funny. How life becomes a sitcom, which huh. you probably passed by because, Oh good. A hit show is now, is now closing after 10 years. And now we're going to see, Oh, accumulated life wisdom about what, what, you know, about after I, I, I created a family sitcom, like, okay, boring. Uh, but uh, Phil Rosenthal was on uh, Kevin Pollock's chat show uh, last week, and he is one hell of a funny storyteller who's had an incredible uh, amount of adventures. And also, he talks like this. Hello. He <laughs> has a wonderful delivery. I'm Phil like, Rosenthal. Like a younger version of Five-ish Finger. <laughs> and he knows, where the, he knows where the punchline is. He knows where the punchline is and how to tell it. So uh, when you're talking about a person, who has been working in the television industry? Who wrote? You, you remember? You remember that video where Bill Clinton, the final years at the Gridiron Dinner. Yes. He's the one who wrote it. He's the one who shot it, and he has a story about how that came to with be. Kevin Spacey stealing and Kevin Bill Spacey. Steals, Clinton steals his Oscar. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, and so so at, at minimum track. So I think that you will definitely get this audio book if you go to the Kevin Call Pollock's Chat Show page and download that episode. Ten minutes in, you're like audible.com. <laughs> I can get six or seven hours of this. Excellent. 
It's such a great. Let me. Can I just? I'll play a little. I don't know if you got. Do you have my audio? Let me play a little bit. Let's. I want to hear Phil's voice. Sorts. That's right, Oprah. And I'll swear it's all true, even if you make the mean face at me on the couch. <laughs> we'll also, if you're interested, get into how to make a show, specifically the show everybody loves, Raymond. You're well, absolutely right. He does. <laughs> like, so sometimes, sometimes you buy a book at least. 60 percent oh yeah i would i would enjoy having this guy in my yeah. car for seven hours this is my next <laughs> book i love it i'm gonna put it right you see you have this nice thing on the uh, audible that it's called the wish list i've used my two credits for the month but here you go you go to the wish list and you just add that to your wish list and then well, i forgot to do that though uh, you add it to your wish list and then the next time um uh, i got some credits i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go over there and i'll say hey i'll get phil phil's good he's nice he's funny Audible, here's the deal. Audible.com slash MacBreak. You're going to be, uh, you're going to get a credit for a book. Most books are credit. There are a few that are not. I apologize in advance. This book is one credit, free, yours to keep. Audible.com. Uh, Andy's recommendation. Phil Rosenthal, you're lucky you're funny. How life becomes a sitcom. And now it's time for a pick from Mr. Renee Ritchie of iMore.com. There's, it's not a brand new app. I mean, there's a couple of new apps that aren't out yet that I would love to talk about, but this one is, uh, it's been around for a while. And especially since I've got the Retina MacBook and I have things strewn all over other computers that I'm not using right now, it's Adovia's Screens uh, by Luke Vandal. And it's a VNC app, but it's a VNC app that's really iOS and Mac looking, feeling, working. It's incredibly fast. It lets you connect from your iPhone or your iPad or another Mac. It's almost like back to your Mac if Apple bothered to make it for iOS devices <laughs> as well. I would. And, and it syncs it over iCloud. Yes. <laughs> and it <laughs> syncs over iCloud. And uh, I've been using it, I think, over a year. I use it constantly. And I've had nothing but um, good experiences with it. So yeah. I, I highly recommend it. it. You can go to screensapp.com or edovia.com screens. And so you need the... Um, the Mac version and the iOS version, is that right? If you want to use it, yeah. The iOS is a universal app, so it'll work on both iPad okay. and iPhone. If you want the Mac version too, uh, yeah, it's a separate Mac Store app. And he's actually in the Mac App Store. He's sandboxed. He's doing everything that Apple says you should do for next generation <laughs> Mac apps. Hard to believe. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand. Do I need, if I want to use screens on my iPad to access my desktop, do I need it on my desktop as well? or No. 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 He yep. has this. Re as a matter of fact, he has this really good free tool called Screens Connect. Because you know how, like, back to my Mac is supposed to work, but doesn't, <laughs> depending on whether the coffee shop has the wrong kind of router, doesn't right. have the right feature enabled. Right. Screens Connect is, is essentially like a, a, a dynamic DNS system, so that your the machine you want to connect to will always be telling oh, a screen goodness. server that, oh, here's where, here's how to find me, here's how to get through uh, to me, and it just works incredibly reliably. I, I I double this pick because that I've been using Screens Connect at least several times a, a week on my iPad, and this is how I fill in the gap between not having a certain Mac app on my iPad and using it as my, my main going-around computer. I actually use back to my Mac all the time because it's my home router is set up properly and all that, but yeah. it would be nice to have that, you know, kind of I reliably. Have I have a friend who's a network admin, and his dream has always been to sit by the pool, sip a pina colada, and run his <laughs> server room from an iPad, and he actually uses yeah. screens and, and does just that. Okay. And that to me is just like the best recommendation. Awesome, not, awesome. Not only that, but it's, it's the coolest thing ever. Like when you're when I'm when I'm doing like an installation that's going to take like or download is going to take forty five minutes to an hour, and you don't you want to know when it's done so you can yes. go down and like the backup's over so now I can actually start working on this thing. I'll have screens on my iPhone and just occasionally take it out of my pocket just to look at the status bar of that Mac to say okay I, I should I should mm -hmm. I finish, finish this drink right now get in the car and go home because it looks like it's going to be done in about ten minutes. Very and nice. I've used it in bars on my iPhone to do just that, to look at my computer <laughs> at home over 3G. And he's also working on Screens 3. I think it's still a little ways away, but this is not one of those apps that's going to fall by the wayside. He's very good about pushing it forward. Cool. Good recommendation. Thank you, Renee. Andy Anako. I don't know. Did you prepare a lion tip? Do you want to do that first and then um, a recommendation? I have a lion tip. If you need to get right to the pick, I can go to the pick. But I've, Go to the pick. Go to the pick. Oh, go to the pick. Okay. We'll save the uh, lion for next week. Well, always good to have a tip for next week. Um, this is a very simple device I've been looking for for quite a while. It's from Belkin. It's the Belkin Car Audio Connect Aux. Awful, awful product name. But what it is is it's for people like me who 
All I want, to, I, I'm not an audiophile. I'm also not a car guy. So I'm not willing to spend $200 to have a Bluetooth uh, audio deck put into my car just so I can connect to it wirelessly. So this is the nicest Bluetooth uh, Bluetooth kit I've, I've seen. Uh, on this end, it's just your basic, you know, uh, cigarette ladder connector with built-in USB power. You got this uh, plug jack that plugs into whatever audio in you have on your existing car deck. And then this is simply a Bluetooth transceiver that magnetically sticks onto your dashboard. So if you want to hide this or take it out of your car like I've just done, you can just simply yank it out uh, without any harm done. Uh, and so when you get into your car, you just simply tap this button. Uh, it turns on the Bluetooth. Your uh, phone automatically connects to it. And now you've got Bluetooth audio. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a, a uh, you, you got Bluetooth audio and you've got the, the audio feed going. It's also a Bluetooth microphone hands-free. So anytime you want to answer a call, you can simply reach to the dashboard, touch this button again, and you'll be using this as a Bluetooth uh, microphone with the audio going through your car stereo. So again, for someone who didn't want to, it's, it's, it's an old car. I'm probably going to be buying a new one in a year or two anyway. So who, you know, I don't, it's not worth taking my dash apart to put in a new stereo. But this gives me like the Bluetooth audio that I've really, really wanted. And you can get it for less than 50 bucks. Works great. On Belkin, it's eighty dollars, but uh, Amazon and but others off, probably off. have better deals. Yeah, yeah. I've used it too. It's fantastic. So yeah. this, so this, does it use A two DP to connect? Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, any any like Bluetooth three, uh, even Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth three profile uh, work just fine with it. So it acts not only as a stereo uh, as a stereo uh, uh, transponder, but also will act as a hands free device. The, your phone will uh, will respect. We'll use it as identify it and use it as both of those things. But you do need a aux into your car stereo. Yeah, this is this is the end that plugs into whatever you've got inside your car. So if you don't have one of those yet, you're going to have to get one of those. But <laughs> if if you ha if you have again if if you if you got like an ancient beater car with just a cassette deck. You can have the cassette adapter, use a gender changer right. to plug this in. Fortunately, my car is not so old that I don't have a way to put like aux input to it. It just didn't have Bluetooth. And I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, it's kind really of that, that, that's at the middle range. Uh, it was it was like, do, 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 I, do I want Bluetooth in my car or do I want the brakes to work again? Maybe I should get the brakes fixed. The really great thing, too, is if you have friends, family, significant others who happen not to use Apple gear, Bluetooth is absolutely platform agnostic. Right, so anyone right. can jump in and hook up their their phone or, or tablet and just use it. Yeah, and it's, I mean, for, and especially when you're traveling, like if you just want to be able to connect to the, the stereo system that's inside your, uh, uh, if, if, if I'm sorry, if you're traveling, you want to connect to the stereo that's inside your rental car, this is small oh, enough good. that it's worth it's worth packing so that maybe if you if you rent a car that has a, a headphone jack input, this will work with it just fine. $50.99 on Amazon.com. Thank you, Mr. Andy Anako, Chicago Sun-Times www.cwob.com We will see you again next week. See you next month. Thanks. Next month. Oh, yeah. Contact our bursar for <laughs> reimbursement. <laughs> our comptroller will be in touch. Does Greyhound go all the way from New England to San Francisco? I guess I'm going to I can out. buy you one a one-way Greyhound ticket right here. Yeah, all, it only matters to it only matters to Mac break that you're here for the show. After that, you kind of <laughs> how you get home is your problem. <laughs> you're, you're literally meeting me halfway. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Thank you to Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. A great pleasure always to have you on. Anything oh, you want to plug your podcast? Anything? Uh, no, I mean, you can find me at iMore.com or you can follow me on Twitter at Renee Ritchie. And thank you again for having me, Leo. It's always a blast. Uh, we love having you on. And you've been doing such great work at iMore. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for being here. We do Mac Break Weekly every eleven, every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, that would be 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and then 11 is plus 7 is 1800 UTC on twit.tv. We can't, you know, by the way, live.twit.tv also works, and we keep that alive for all of you who uh, need that particular kind of interface. We also recommend, though, and there's some really good apps for iOS, uh, Craig Mullaney at Shift Key Software has uh, done an app for iPhone and iPad, and he just updated it, and it's really great. So a good way to watch if you're using an iOS device is uh, the uh, Twit app from ShiftKey Software. Uh, we highly recommend that as well. And uh, we appreciate having you here live. It's great to see you in the chat room and all of that. But if you can't, we always have uh, audio and video available after the fact on demand at twit.tv. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. The the Gizwiz is up in about a minute, <laughs> in just a bit. Um, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Now get back to work because break time is over. <laughs> <laughs>